getting into oh yeah eminem is doing a documentary on tupac as well but first things first man rest in peace to uh mr c and for the people who are familiar uh mr c is a dj legend in new york and in hip-hop in general and he's the one that brought biggie to diddy uh back in the day he is the dj that is credited with bringing the notorious big to diddy so he changed hip-hop history in many ways he was just rocking a party what two nights ago i believe we don't have any details on exactly what happened but rest in peace to mr c i mean i know a lot of people um you know been following hip-hop following his career uh probably know about some of the outside stuff but man forget all that man he's a hip-hop legend and an icon in a sense for you know the icons that he brought in the door and rest in peace man mike, um, mike bring your camera down man you looking up to the other camera bring your camera uh, i'm tripping i'm you know what you're right i'm looking i need to just look at the people because tilt, I'm tilt, tilt, your tilt, tilt, tilt your camera tilt, tilt your computer right. and push your computer back a little bit get right a little bit you know yeah, what I mean? yeah yeah let's get right you know what i got a different camera going on there we go is that a little better that's a little better. It's a little better. It's a little Talk better. To a little shout bit. out to Mr. C, man. Rest in peace to Mr. C. We don't know yeah. the cause. We don't know any news just yet, but uh, he was real instrumental. Big Daddy Kane and Big, and, yeah. you know. Yeah, he was Big Daddy Kane's tour DJ, actually. Yeah, thanks for bringing that up, too. So him, um, you know, being Big Daddy Kane's DJ and being able to bring Big in the game, man, he's seen a lot. And he, he brought a lot of great lyricism to the game. And, you know, rest in peace to him. Shout out to Brooklyn. Brooklyn's in the house, man. Um, another one that happened, and it, it was kind of touched on Monday because somebody jumped in the chat and kind of confirmed it. Uh, Magba, from one of the founders of Rap Genius, he passed away as well. And I was, you know, I had the privilege of giving his last interview. Just posted it here on According to Hip Hop, you know, just in his memory. But... Uh, you know, we we kind of got in this digital space around similar times. I know, Ryan, you went up to um, the Rap Genius first office in Williamsburg, right? In Brooklyn? Right, right, right. So I hooked up with Rap Genius. You know, we were, were trying to, we were in the tech world. We started out and I went up to New York, you know, got up with Mac Bob, went up to that first office in Williamsburg. It was right on the river. You know what I mean? And uh, that's when I first met Troy Ave. Shout out to Troy Ave real quick. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So Troy Ave was in the office and we uh we kind of kind of linked and he had a vision for like the internet in the future, you know, of music and how music can be incorporated with digital currency and the internet. But uh, it, was a, it was a loss for the tech community. Big supporter of According to Hip Hop. Yeah, um, yeah, man. I mean, I reached, out to him. I reached out to him about a year ago, just randomly. And I was like, yo, you want to do an interview? You know what I'm saying? And he'd be like, dope. He was like, dope. Let's do it. And so um, we connected and did the interview, posted it on here. And, you know, we talked about everything from, from Ye to, you know, Rap Genius, his problems with the tech world, music and tech coming together. I mean, it's a dope interview. And, I mean, it's a great send-off. He was a he was a forward thinking mind. Um, you know, they, they got their original start from breaking down Cameron lyrics. I think he talked about that in the interview too. So uh, we don't have a lot of interviews out there, but the one that I did with him really kind of got into the crux of, you know, his, his legacy, if you will, where he comes from, how he got into hip hop and all of those things. So rest in peace to him, man. It's just weird, man. When you got somebody that you talk to in your phone, and you know they're not there no more to talk to like call the number and it's just nothing. that's a, that's a crazy i had a couple of people that we that we lost man in my phone man you go back and look at that last text message and it's like damn I, I was just texting homie last week and he gone you know what i mean so but shout out to mr c man shout out to matt bob man shout out to their families and whatnot but let's jump right into the show James, I we've got a super chat here he says cold cold this mr c on forbidden fruit Glad he was alive to see him embarrass himself against the current uh, best rapper, Kendrick Lamar. R.I.P. C. Mm. Mm. Yeah, we didn't want to get in the cold today, man. We want to let that die, <laughs> man. The algorithm's getting in rock with the cold talk. I mean, it is what it is. You know, Joe Budden said that he's got Drake, 
Drake and Kendrick got some joints that's about to drop. We'll wait to see what happens and we'll resume on the topic. I did want to clarify one thing, Mike. Okay. A lot of people in the comments said I was, you know, I'm a Cole stand and I'm, you know, I kind of was backpedaling and dogging Cole out. All only thing I said was I was confused about the energy that he was presenting before the apology, right? And that his energy in the last 18 to 24 months rapping on these features had me excited about the fall off. So I'm not sincere questioning his brother's sincerity or his uh, how the spirit moved him or whatever in that regard. It was that the energy was a little bit different and left me confused because he said he hated the disc record, but the other records on the album uh, might delete later with disc records too. So I, that's all I was saying. You alluded to the fact that he was acting on stage. No, I was I was going against some other people that was in the chat said it might have been a phone call made. And I think I seen that in the comments saying that somebody from I don't know, we got relationships. I don't know. Somebody made a phone call and and, and it says something because the energy just doesn't match the apology. That's all I'm saying. So I ain't, you know, we will let it play out. We don't want to get to it. I'm an Esquire on this, man. I mean, you know, I think the the breakdown the Esquire did convinced me. I think that Cole is just a guy who you know, he he kind of takes on public opinion. You know what I mean? And, uh, and and I agree with LP. Like phone call for what? Like whoever made a quote unquote phone call, they they didn't benefit Cole any because he's the only one that's looking a little shaky here. You know what I'm saying? But right. I did see a post before we get all into you know these guys again. Pause. It's like. There is an in- internet thread out there of all the people who have apologized to Kendrick. Have you seen that? I have seen that, and it's very odd. I think it's I saw Jay, I saw Jay Electronic on the list. Huh? No, I, I got it right here. I got it right here. Let me read this real quick. So it says, uh, Lupe Fiac- Fiasco apologizes to Kendrick for criticizing his talent. I'll never do that shit again. That was in 2018. Jay Electronica apologizes for 50 Cent and Kendrick Lamar disses. And obviously the Macklemore text of Kendrick apologizing for winning the Grammy. I don't know if that fits in, but it's still an apology. It is interesting. Jermaine Johnson with the Super Chat says, I got the experience of Mr. C set at the uh, 2018 Brooklyn Hip Hop Festival. Rest heavily. Thank you. For sure. Anybody else seen Mr. C spin live? Because I know I've heard him on Hot 9-7, and incredible DJ. Man, I didn't see Mr. C spin, but I did. I was in Texas. I saw um, Biz Marquis spin. I was going to say that. I saw Biz in New Year's Eve in New York, actually. This that, like 07 or something. That was crazy. The same show was Big Daddy Kane and Biz Marquis. And I'm telling you, the Biz Marquis set was probably the hardest set I ever saw. In my life, this marquee is incredible, man. We talk, I mean, we'll talk about the Q tip and his, you know, incredible array of talent. But somebody like Biz, who's an artist, a DJ, beatbox, like an entertainer, like I think people like him don't get enough credit. I'm glad Missy Elliott's getting her credit now, but Missy Elliott kind of got a lot from Biz. Like, Missy's kind of like her era's version of Biz Marquee bumped up a little bit you know what i mean you could tell he was an influence on her so shout out to biz rest in peace to him as well shout out to shout out to biz yo let's get into the show man i'm looking at the comments people talking about pop you know for me let's talk pop let me get it let me let me say this real quick man let me just say this real quick pop to me he could be argued as the best as the goat you know because pop Pac had the streets, Pac had the hipsters, like he was an artist, you know what I'm saying, in that poetry pocket. Um, He was an actor. I mean, his music resonates damn near decades later. You know what I mean? It's not, it wasn't, it wasn't like trendy. He wasn't jumping on the trends. I mean, he started off with Digital Underground and he got in a solo career. I mean, I, you can make an argument that Pac was number one. I think Billboard had him like what number six, like right? No, 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 five, no, Billboard was number four. He was like number four or five yeah. or something like that. But um, they had Kendrick ahead of him, it, and that's what I don't understand. I don't want to get into the Kendrick Lamar debate today, and that's for another day. But I didn't understand how Kendrick got over Pac. Pac to me, man, we talk about uh, picture me rolling. You picture uh, you talking about one of my favorite Pac records was uh, Life Goes On on uh, All Eyes on Me. 
I mean, you got the party joints. How do you want it? You got hit them up. You got Hail Mary to live and die in LA. Brenda's got a baby. You got Dear Mama. You got Amer- Ambitions of a Rider. You got two of America's most wanted. Uh, I, I mean, you got, I mean, damn, man. I mean, yeah, the range is crazy. I mean, you know, I had to argue a young dude the other day about Michael Jordan's greatness, right? He was, um, <laughs> He was saying that Michael Jordan wasn't everything that we say he is, you know what I mean? And I'm like, well, you, first of all, you had to be there, and he was the perfect player. He had everything for the time. He had the post game. He had the incredible vertical. He had the hang time. He had the um, the uh, fundamentals. He had the hands. He had the the clutch where he was coming. In. It, it, it's everything. And I say that to say. The new era sometimes does that with Pac, right? Because we take for granted the things that artists have been able to do since he was here. But before him, you didn't have MCs that were that balanced. Everybody kind of lived in a lane, which was cool because everybody mastered their lane. Like Tribe mastered their lane. Rakim mastered his lane. LL mastered his lane. But Pac was able to be a bunch of different guys in one. He had his Chuck D moments. He had his LL moments. He had his um, uh, Ice Cube moments. You know what I mean? He had his Scarface moments. He could do all of those things seamlessly. And I think one of the things that was in his chamber that goes understated and underrated is his storytelling ability. I it think is. Like the top 10 storytelling MC. Easy, easy, and people forget about that. I mean, he had it all, man. He had the he could do the he could do the party joints. He was a storyteller. He had the both the street pocket. He had the art the artsy part pocket, the rapidly rap pocket. I think people forget, man, because we so removed since his death. Right. That how how great Pac was, man. I think he was a he he was like a he was a hip hop star, but he was like a rock star. He was like an yeah. enigma, you know what I mean? And, I, and man, and, and, and you know what? I'm pissed off today because I saw Hip Hop DX did some BS, man. They put this mug shot out, you know, from like you know, almost what is it, 20, 30 years ago? You know what I mean? Where did this come from? Because I'm seeing this floating around the internet today. I, I, I didn't even want to post it on the court. You don't post record. no shit like that, man. That shit was whack, man. You post, post, post about this man's art, post about this man's legacy. You talk about all this sideline shit, you know, as far as you know, his mugshot and all this dumb shit, man. Talk about his music, his impact to the culture. Again, I don't see why Billboard had him, you know, at, you know, uh, uh, under Kendrick Lamar. I don't think Kendrick Lamar would put, put himself above pop. You know well, what I mean? can tell you why. I think it's that narrative that Pac wasn't an MC; he's a rapper, and I think that narrative of the rapidy rap thing is like it's too much. You know what I'm saying? It's it's more to being an MC, and we I want to talk to Leroy about this too because I know Leroy really gets into the rapidy rap stuff. But and we got into a Pac tangent the other day, but it's more to being an MC. They, you know, just rhyming a whole bunch of big words and different phrases and syllables and this and that. And that's part of it, too. And yep. that's art in itself. But the number, in my personal opinion, the number one objective in this rap shit is to connect. And connect. however you do that, connect. Connect, connect. And speaking of connect. And speaking of connect, shout out to Jack Lang in the chat. The reason why I'm wearing these shades, man, because I got an eye, I got an eye problem, man, and the light is, is hurting my eye. But once I <laughs> get once that gets fixed, y'all see my eyes. I wear my glasses and we'll be straight. I just wanted to clear yeah. that up. Y'all can see my eyes, but my eyes is just messed up with the lights, man. I got an eye little issue, medical issues, all good. Cool, cool. But yeah, I mean, I think that I think that pot connecting and, and that's music period like you know what i'm saying marvin gay connected i think that Pac really is hip-hop's marvin gay and when you look at marvin gay's catalog he did a lot of things like he could do the love songs he could do the you know sexual songs he could do the world changing songs oh. and, and clearly <laughs> you know, Pause the sexual songs. Well, whatever you know what i mean like sexual <laughs> music, you know what i mean stuff like that he could do ballads he could do, you know, saying the, you know, all that, that that takes you into the bedroom and all that. And he could do, um, um, he could do uh, what's going on and um, um, city blues. Like he could do all of those things. And I think that Pac really drew from artists like him and brought it over to hip hop in a time where we didn't have that in hip hop. 
And I think that a current generation looks at emceeing as, you know, putting a bunch of syllables together. And I think our era, we looked at it also in like your range and how many things you could do. Like I looked at DMX like that, recipes to him, three years since he passed yesterday. Um, but he was able to give you a slip and he was able to give you a how's it going down. He had range as an artist, but before pop, I don't know if people had that kind of range. You know what I'm saying? Like, did he create the lane for range like that? Because I think, he, I think he did. I think he did. Nobody had that range. I'm trying to think. Because LL Kane, had that range. Did Kane have that like range? Song, hardcore song. Did Kane have that range? Was Kane like a... Kane was a uh, knowledge of self. And, you know, he he spoke... And he spoke with some sense, but it was a sense of consciousness, but it, he didn't take it to the level that Pac did. So you can say that Kane did have range, but I look at Kane as more of like an MC's MC. Like, ain't no half step. Like, he just gonna bar you up. I didn't look to Kane for like, you know, storytelling records because, I mean, was Kane really a storyteller like that? And correct me if I'm wrong in the chat. Pac did it all. Mike, let me Mike, let me ask you a question real quick. This is this may be a cr crazy question, but my brain is computing different things, different MCs or different groups. Was Tretch like an East Coast version of Pac? Was I don't think so. I, I, I mean, I mean the way they presented Tretch. Oh, you're you know talking about image wise. Image wise, well, he told he told, story, he told stories. You know what I'm saying? Was okay, he a story? Was he kind of, I'm not saying he was Pac, but did he, I know that him and Pac were tight, but was that like uh, that kind of shit? Was that like an East Coast version where they try to prop him up to be like a mirror of Pac on the East, on the East Coast? I don't, I, don't, I don't think so. I mean, I think that, you know, when, when people are friends, especially when they're coming up in the game together, they probably draw from each other. I'm sure there's some things that Pac probably got from Tretch and vice versa. So... Um, but the stretch get do? Like, Does stretch get his due? The stretch get his due? I I don't think so, but I think that because Tretch's greatest moments are in a group, and for whatever reason, we don't give him that Andre three thousand type of treatment, even though he held down many of those songs alone. Everything's gonna be all right. Is a solo Tretch song. OPP is a solo Tretch song. So. I, I do think he's understated, but the reason why I think he doesn't get his just due is because Naughty had bangers, some of the best, some of the biggest bangers we ever seen in hip hop. But the albums, they don't, I don't know if they have a top 100 hip hop album all the time. Mm. And I think what, you know, someone in here said, Tretch doesn't have the individual catalog. Um, no. And, and, you know, and, and that would be fair, too, because it's hard to say, like, let's just say Jersey alone. Let's look at Tretch versus like a Red Man or something. It's like, man, Red Man got muddy waters. Right. Got, right. Yeah, there's a dark side. You know what I mean? He got shit. He even got Doc's the name where he's just spitting and it's just him. Right. Because right. Poverty is Paradise is a top 50 hip hop album. I don't know about that, guys. I don't know about 50? 50? I mean, uh, 50. We can probably get... Uh, I mean, we, Paradise? Nah, man. I, we got to take a look. We got to do that one day. We got to do the yeah. top 50. We got to do the top 50 joints. Well, yeah. all right. So, Pac probably has two of those top 50 with me against the world and uh, all eyes on me. I'm not sure if Machiavelli is, and Machiavelli's great. So, is Poverty is Paradise better than Machiavelli? I don't think so. That's his okay, Yo, Tretch killed craziest, though. I think that's an underrated performance by him. He has great performances. That's the thing. Jermaine Johnson with the Super Chat says, I'm a fan of Pac, the rapper, but um, I'm an even bigger fan of Pac, the actor. I believe that he was on his way to becoming one of the great box office actors. Do you think if he would have uh, lived on, his music would have, uh, if he would have lived on, do you think his music would have taken a back seat to his acting career? I think so. I think as he got older, I think Pac would have transitioned to acting. I think Pac was a, I mean, we talked about Juice about a, a couple of shows ago. If you watch Juice, that's an actor that's on the on the cusp. 
I mean, he could be like Samuel Jackson, Denzel Washington type shit, man. I'm talking about Pac was, Pac had that range, bro. I mean, Pac would have been, I mean, Pac would have been the biggest star in the world. I think this music yeah, would have it would have taken a back seat. I mean, they would have put Pac in like action movies. They would have put Pac in like, you know, he might have been on like a, um, a, a, you know, homicide life on the street. He might have been on like, you know, uh, a TV show or a long run on something like that. He could have played a doc. I mean, he, Pac was just that guy, man. And, okay, um, so let, let, let's go into a different era, right? Let's just say Pac in 98. What what kind? Because it's so crazy to think, man. He he died in ninety six, ninety seven. Here comes you know P Diddy and the family, and you know and then Big's passing, and then you got Master P in ninety eight. Master P still DMX comes around, Jay emerges. What does the game look like in nineteen ninety eight with Tupac here? Daddy, can I have cookies? Yeah, go ahead. The, the game, the game looks different because you know we sat down with Big Gip. He said Goody Mob and Pac were working on an album. Yeah, that's one. You had Death Row East that might have popped off, and Nas, Nas probably would have been on. He said it was conversation with Nas being on Death Row East. They was trying to patch everything up, so there'd been some Nas and Pac records. Uh, Suge was saying that him and Big, were, he was going to try to patch things up with Big. He was going to try to get Big over to Death Row. So the game might have been different. That 98 era that happened might not have happened. It might not yeah, have happened. I, mean, I think we'll never know, but in my mind, as a you know hip-hop fan and follower, I believe that if Pac lives, Big doesn't you know, meet that demise, at least not at that time or whatever. So those guys are around. I don't know if I see, you know, should sign in Biggie. I don't know if I see that, but I would hope at some point the tensions would have went down. I think the tensions were just too high for both of them to carry on without some level of, you know, it being calmed down. But hypothetically, though, in 98, if Big and Pac are here, I don't I don't know. I don't know if DMX is coming through with that same splash and that same uh, momentum. DMX is a, a a real different kind of card because DMX was around in 92. DMX always was talented. I've heard early DMX records, and it's like, yo, this dude was crazy with it. The only reason why he had issues staying on labels is because he was in and out of jail and things like that. And Def Jam took a chance on him. I don't know if Def Jam takes that same chance if Pac is here. I could be wrong. But as far as Master P goes... I saw Master P get momentum and get Pac fans that were missing Pac in that moment. He was, um, you know, even even stuff like uh, uh, Only God Can Judge Me and kind of just his approach was very palatable to the Tupac fan that was missing Pac. You know what I mean? Right, right. I mean, I, I mean, we just thought we never would know. I mean, his life got cut short. And without the No Limit run, does cash money happen in the way that it does? It's, it's funny how these domino effects come from like one person. And Could you imagine? I, I'm trying to. I'm trying to imagine if Pac was still around during that Cash Money run. I think he would have made some good records with Cash Money. You know, Pac. I can't made. even imagine Pac being around in 1998, and it's crazy to say that because 98 and 96 are just two years apart. Like that's how different those two different those two uh, years were. That gap. 2022 and 2024 aren't that different. But 1996 and 1998 are extremely different. It's crazy to think that. Uh, Jermaine Johnson with the Super Chat says, I could totally see Pac uh, in a star role on The Wire. His hometown makes too much sense. So if he delves further into acting, and I agree with you guys, I think that acting just makes so much sense. Man, Hollywood writes you a check that you just that an artist just can't refuse you know what i'm saying well, i was drinking for his birthday i feel it sip it up i'm drinking orange juice man i'm drinking some orange juice. i'm 41 years old b <laughs> yeah, so I'm yeah not- i mean those acting checks were just too good to turn down but i don't know if tupac with his message and everything that he stood on i don't know if he would retire from hip-hop per se I think we would probably just get projects further and further apart. 
Let's get our let's get our man from the West Coast on. Leroy Green is in the building. Let's let's get his perspective on Pac. Let's add him to the let's add him to the situation. All right, man. Leroy. Back to the chat too. He says X is better than Big. Uh, and would have popped regardless. X came out with productions we never heard before. X is not better than Big, and I love X. I love X. X ain't better than Big. Leroy, Leroy. What's up, brother. What's good? What's good? How everybody doing? We're good, man. We're good, man. Rest in peace. Yeah, everybody. Yeah, I got my X shirt on, man. You know what I mean? I got my uh, Pray for Paris back there. I can't. Let me get my levels right. Y'all hear me, everybody? My two. No, you sound fine to me. I came in on a completely different energy. I was about to come in here and just really be who Mike knows me to be. You know what I mean? (laughs) You know what I mean? Okay, we, we're talking lyrical miracle stuff right. versus uh you know Pac's approach. And um I firmly believe that Billboard didn't have him higher because of the lyrical didexities that yeah, Pac didn't display. Even though he had those syllables and stuff, he had a straightforward approach, he had an ice cube chuck D style of approach. I would even say Scarface. And sometimes when we start ranking MCs, people kind of yeah. hold that against the greats. What say you? Um, I, I I see both sides of the argument now, but for me personally, you don't have to be a lyrical miracle for me to respect you. To me, Pac is lyrical. To to me personally, he he gets the job done. Right, you go in to write a song about this. Do you get the job done? To me. Pac does that. So when people are like, yeah, he gets the job done. But what's the job? That's that, that, that is a very important question, you know, and I, and I, and I want to get into that, but it's like, how deep do y'all want to go? Do y'all want me to be nice to y'all or do y'all want me to give you the real, not, not, not my, the chat. Do y'all want me to be real with y'all? They want to be be real, be real. Come with the real, Be, 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 be real. We want the real perspective. I'm going to be real, right? Okay, what Pac was trying to do is kind of difficult, right? He was trying to unite the people under a, uh, a, a a revolutionary type of mindset which has principles behind the, not just gangsterism, but the principles behind it, right? To keep the, the, the energy of manhood in the message and also galvanize that. But he was using the gangster archetype right not only it was very popular at the time so i don't i don't blame him for doing that and i'm not saying he was copying i'm he was being honest uh what i believe with what he was feeling but he's using the the gangster uh mold to put in positive messages right now that is what was going to make people listen yeah right that is very difficult to do for anybody i don't care if you are super lyrical that is going to be very difficult to do. So that was the mission. But from what, for, but he all made us feel something, and we all love him for that. So the mission was accomplished. You know what I mean? And he could do the if he wanted to do the lyrical stuff. You know, what I, mean? I came in here on bar time. I'm gonna keep it real. I can y- y'all got my text today, right? Yeah, 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 I, yeah, I, yeah. I got you. I got the bars. I got the bars. You want? I, it's something you want. You want? You want break? You want, it's something you bro? You want to spit them? What, what's up? Yeah. Now, now I feel sad though. You know, what I, mean? I came in here on bar time. You know what I mean? Because people think it's some type of game, right? You know what I mean? But um, maybe before we go, right? But so what Tupac was trying to do, it, it takes, it does take a lot of skill. There, there are people and we have to learn to respect different people's opinion. And that's one thing, you know, that we struggle with as a culture. If we see someone else come in and say they like uh, cannabis, right? They're going to say, well, cannabis is is more lyrical than Pac. And you don't have to agree with that person, but if you can see where that person is coming from, that, yeah. that's you can you can see where that person is coming from. You know what I mean? But and, and that is and that's not gonna disrespect Pac because again, there are a billion people out here. You know, you can rap so where you want. Cannabis, cannabis is more lyrical than a lot of people <laughs> by that metric. Yo, yo, my dude, man, Max had a, had something in the chat. He said X was bet, better than was better than Big. Yeah, I just read that. That's not true. <laughs> Blades with the super chat says, "Peace, Leroy Green. Great to see you podcasting for sure." But <laughs> I, appreciate, 
when you say better than big, let's 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 unpack that real quick. What, I, I want to know what Mad Max is thinking when he says he's better than big. How is it? I, I want to understand that because if you're talking about from rapidly rap or bar for bar, I think Big had a better flow and Big 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 could rap better. But are we saying overall X was better he than Big? Yeah, may have connected more for sure. You know, um, was I don't think X was better than Pac. So I want to ask Mad Max was was X better than Pac? Does he think X uh, better than Pac? Mad Max got is it got Pac is his goat. Now I will say this. Does Juicy connect? I got you, Michael Brown. <laughs> uh, well, I listened to Juicy the other day, man. It was, you know, I lo- I like Juicy. Juicy's a great record, but I'm like, uh, you know, it's cool. You well, know, when what does Biggie get, you know, like like what DMX did with Slipping. When does Biggie do that? For the people who are, you know, who would say the X is better, because I think that's probably where that's coming from. I mean, slipping. He don't have really a slipping, but you got the long kiss goodnight. You got what's beef. You got um, you know, like somebody's like killing you. Struggle, of course. You know, what I mean, I think that's his moment of you know being able to. He has suicidal thoughts too. And he's like, I know how I feel to wake up fucked up. Pockets broke as hell. Another rock to sell. People looking at you like you to use a seller drugs to all the losers. Man, Buddha abuser. They don't know about the stress-filled days. Baby, you're on the way. Bad bills to pay. That's why you drink Tangeray. I think he did a lot more of that already to die. You know, things done change. You know, it, it's interesting because on the surface, and if we look from a technical aspect, a lot of people got life after death over ready to die. But ready to die has those moments. The life after death just kind of doesn't. You know, it has those. You what know, was the first album, Mike? It was different. different. It was, yeah, his first, it was his first album. He's in a different headspace. He rapping yeah. to make it. You know what I'm saying? He already made it when, when Life After Death came out. You know what I mean? So, yeah. And, and those first those debut albums, when you really come from the grit with it, very tough to match. I mean, ask Nas, ask Jay. You know what I'm saying? Like, Reasonable Doubt, based on the life that Jay-Z lives now, and even after Reasonable Doubt, could never be duplicated. He you know, never I, I, make another one. You know, I think, man, you know, we got to be watching, watch what we say, man. I think I heard a story. I heard a story about Puff when it was, when, it, when the life after death was coming out, right? Mm-hmm. He was like adamant that they go to a graveyard and shoot the, shoot and shoot the, 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 the album cover. I think he might have spoke some things into existence, man. I think, you know, ready to die, life after death. I think we got to be careful what we put out. I'm just, I'm, you know, I'm, that's my birthday today. I agree so. With that. I'm just speaking. I'm speaking from a from an OG level. You know what I'm saying? But I think I, it was weird that was an article that I read. And I, we can share that on another venue on our on our website. But it was an article. Where Puff was like, "But we got." He was like, "We got to find this graveyard. We big got to go to the graveyard." It was just, it was wild, man. But uh, why was that so important? Mad Max with the super chat says X is better than Big Mike. He had his own unique flow style, better content. X make uh, can make any song. Big can make big making prayer doubt it. I mean, you know what? That's a that's an interesting take. I, you know, but I just think when I listen to the two MCs, I think the big is probably the most skilled overall MC that I've ever heard effortlessly, and you can hear him continuously getting better. His performance on uh, Victory, his performance on Shaq, <clears throat> Shaq's Can't Stop the Rain. Like, even though I think the Ready to Die has those moments that Life After Death doesn't, you can tell he's the better MC on Life After Death, and he's grown. He grew with his style. He developed his style even more, his songwriting. He couldn't make Sky's the Limit on Ready to Die. Like, that big on Ready to Die was, wasn't capable of making that. You're right. You're right. You're right. Go ahead and cook me, Roy. Yeah, no, we talk about this person is better than that person. And again, I'm just giving my personal opinion, right? We talk, this person is better than that person. When people set out to make music, they're going in different directions. So how can you say one is better than this when they're not even going in the same direction? So when we talk about X and Biggie, Biggie is coming out on the tail end of mafioso rap. Mafioso rap is when you paint a picture around, around a mafia 
ethos. So all your rhymes have a mafia reference or a mafia backdrop. So that's his. that was his thing, right? And so when you get life after death, you hear a lot of that. X is going into something different. So we could say one is better than this, one is better. But these people have different styles. Jay-Z and Redman aren't, aren't talking to the same group of people. So you're saying this is better than that. This is better than that. They have different goals in mind. They, you know what I mean? I think when we're doing that, though, and you're right. Uh, I mean, somebody who is a big time Red Man fan and likes that style and that approach that Red Man takes on and excels in, there's nothing you could tell them to say that you know Red Man that Jay Z is better than Red Man. But I think right. when we start parsing it out and having a overall list, we start looking at all the things that that one person can do versus some of those things that the other person can do it's kind of like you know we always do correlated to basketball like if you got a guy out there who just scores a lot of points is he a better player than the guy who can score points get assists get rebounds and play defense no even though you might say that you know this gifted score can outscore this individual but overall can you make um you know can you make a variety of records? I think that's where we land when we talk about the ludicrous T.I. thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, Luda is nice. Luda can get in the booth, you know, right. saying freestyle, off the top, don't even need to write it. He has that skill set. But you're not going to get a, I'm just doing my job from him. Uh, you're not going to get a praying for help from him and still right. be able to get, you know, live your life. And I'm talking about the one with dad. Or or in a different form, you know what I mean? It'll just right. be in a I, I was saying to someone the other day, p, p, folks want to beat me up about the Pac situation, and I appreciate that. Thank you, but they want to they want to beat me up about the music situation, but I, I appreciate that. You folks can just ask me and I'll just give you an opinion. But if you look at I was telling someone, if you're a 35-year-old truck driver who does no connection to the street, all you try to do is and all you try to do is raise your kids and go home and then go to and do, go do your job. Now, when you're listening to Common Sense, you might relate to his point of view better than 50 Cent because you're not living fifth, a 50 Cent life. When you hear 50s music in that example that you're giving, mm -hmm. it's entertainment to you and you kind of correlate it to certain parts of your life as opposed to just a literal sense. Like, right. When I listen to Jay, you know what I mean? Like I listen to it, at least the street Jay records, I listen to it from a motivational standpoint yes. where it's like, you know, get you up out of the bed to go out here and get on your job and do what you got to do as opposed to like, yo, I got to get out here and move this work. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I know I know many people in corporate America who listen to Jay-Z who have never been affiliated with the streets. What Jay-Z does, he taps into a, a business mind state for them that makes them want to be the best at business that they can be. And they've never been in the street like that. Jermaine so, Super Chat says, don't rap about death. There's power in what you say. Not it, 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 it is power in what you say. And that's why I, 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 I wonder, I sit back and wonder if, if Big didn't name his albums that, that would he still be amongst us? I mean, that's that's something I think about, you know. Well, like, like Nas said, man, he survived the livest niggas around. Like Nas is, he's number one for a reason. He, he was he was around when all of these guys were around. He was a factor when all these guys were around. He was making some of the best music when all these guys were around, and he's still doing it. But let's get back to this Pac talk real quick, though. Let's get back to the Pac talk. Now, where did we? Now we we've seen all the lists, and we've seen all this, and you know, Mike, you've you, you you've given your list, and Leroy, you got a list. I got a list. Where do we put put Pac? I, I would say he's in the top ten, you know. Of course he is. But, but where do we where, where do we put him? I got him in my top five. I can make an argument that he's number one. I got Pac right now, and let me just preface by saying this: when I was young, I was big, all day big. You know, I was a ready to die guy. I was a life after death guy. You know what I mean? I, my favorite my favorite record off of um, Life After Death was I got a story to tell. You know what I mean? I used to play that joint like every day before school like 10 times in a row. I had a little walk man, a disc man or whatever. And I had that joint on repeat. But as I got older, as I got into my late twenties and my thirties, I started revisiting Pox records more. And I, and I still listen to big, I still got it loaded up in Spotify. But to me, as I got older, 
Pac surpassed Big in my older age. Mm-hmm. Me too. Um, so that's that's kind of where I'm at. So I got it. Uh, Pac's been, uh, Big's been falling. Pac's been rising. Jay's been falling a little bit. Pac's been. I listen to more Pac records than I listen to Jay now, nowadays. As I sit with my kids, I'm riding in the car. If I'm going to work, I don't know. I got Pac maybe top three. That's me. That's me. This is where I got it. I got. I mean, off the top of my head right now, I'm gonna go Nas number one. Then I got Jay number two. Then I'm going Rock Him three, and then it may be Pac right after that. I can see that. I can see that. Yeah, it may be Pac right after that. And I mean, when we talk about, you know, somebody's music growing over time and the short time period he did it, and there's nobody that wants to go 20 songs deep with Tupac, and he's been gone for nearly 30 years. I can see that. I can see that. I got Pac. I got, I might, I might have to say Pac. I might have Pac ahead of Jay, man. I just got to be honest, man. For, for I, the I respect Jay's longevity and his growth in the game. And, um, yeah, I mean, Pac made better music, I would say. And I think if Pac lived on and if Big lived on, I think that they both would have probably still been above Jay. But, I mean, Jay just put in way too much work and too many I, different times. I don't, know, I, don't, I don't know where I rock him over Pac, though, man. That's I, I'm not understand, I, I'm not seeing that. I like rock him. Like, rock I love him. He's like Will Chamberlain to me. Like, he's, uh, he's so different. He had no real um, father, if you will, to his style. He came in and changed everything and came in on 10. Like, it wasn't even any evolution. When you think about the people that were rapping on Wax before Paid in Full, and you listen to Paid in Full, it is insane. Like, he's definitely the evolution and stayed ahead of, in my opinion, stayed ahead of the curve for a good while. Really, until Nas came around. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he it, it, and to this day, like if Rock him drops a verse, it's crazy. So I mean, I give him. I mean, I could see somebody putting Pac over Rock him, but to me, the foundation and the time period that Rock him came out in, and he was go from the jump. It's hard to put somebody like Pac, who had to evolve into what he evolved into, over Rock him. So his Pac's I, first I, album ain't paid in full. I I would I, I don't have a problem with Pac being over Rock him. It's very close. It's very close. Yeah, but I I don't have a problem with that. Um, the thing about it is with me, guys, and I'm gonna be a, totally honest with you because I, I have to just like we saw what J. Cole did when he stood on his square, regardless of what everybody else has to think, I gotta stand on my square and I don't care if I'm alone doing it. And that's one thing, that's one thing that people in this space are gonna get very familiar with me with. I don't follow the crowd, I don't I, I, I think I have my own mind, right? I come from the Bay Area. We are very prideful about where we come from. We looked at Pac as if he was ours. Now, when Pac was out, I was listening to a lot of, you know, Spice One, Sibo, Richie Rich. These are people that we looked up in that same vein as, as, as E-40, as a, someone like a Pac. Now, to the rest of the world, they may not understand that. Again, well, I'm, I'm from the Bay too, though. I'm talking about where I'm from. Yeah, yeah. Pac, Pac, Pac is, is from the Bay, right? I mean, not from the Bay, but he was in the Bay, right? Mm-hmm. So um, if anyone has Pac anywhere in the top 10, I I don't have an issue an issue with you. But what I said last week, I'm going to have to stand on. And what I said was, I do not believe Pac had enough time to mature into a, into a fully developed and grown this this symbol is for artist development and this is when you grow as an artist right so if he had been 30 years old 40 years old 45 years old i do not believe we're hearing the same uh Pac. you know i believe i believe we're hearing the total opposite of that Pac. you know what well, i mean i think that adds to how great he is because we were able to get that full spectrum from somebody who hadn't even reached the age of 26 but 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 but, but we never heard that is what i'm saying yes he had all these different things that he could do well that you will not catch me just bashing an artist that doesn't that's not just for pop that's for all of them you're not gonna catch me bashing 
anybody because that's not my mentality like that. So I give Pac and all the artists their due for being versatile, what they brought to the game. I appreciate that. And of course, I love Pac. I was there when the morning he died, people was around me crying, people that are from the Bay Area, people that I, I've met, people that were personal friends with Pac, not just fans, but they knew him, they were around him, they, you know, so, and, and some of them were my friends growing up. So this is, this is serious. You know what I mean? But I do not believe he he had enough time. And we talk about someone like a, a Scarface, even a ghost, even a ghost face, even though people will say, well, he Ghostface doesn't make nothing like that. Even a black thought, a KRS one, a mm -hmm. who did not have the time to a Snoop Dogg to compete with their catalog like that because of what happened. And so I can I, I want to clarify what you're saying because I think I get what you're saying, right? You you're looking at people's careers as a beginning, middle, and end. And yes. you're thinking that uh some people have a complete book, whereas whereas Pac has incomplete chapters. We never got he was cut short that full end where it was like we could, like you said, see what he was making at 30. Because I do think that is a factor when we talk about all-time greatness that's why i got Nas and jay where i got them and mm -hmm. um it's cool when you can see okay jay making a, a american gangster at 36 years old or Nas yeah. making a kd3 at 50 years old like those are special things that separate you from everybody and i'm not trying to say that it's easier to make great records when you're young but when you got that young energy and you're really on the scene it's a lot easier to do that than it is when you're 40 and you're not really engulfed in everything hip hop like you once were when you were 21. I the think energy of a 21 year old's hip hop album is going to be way different than the energy of a 40 year old's hip hop album. And that's just real. I think a, a 50 year old black thought is going to run rapid around a 25 year old black thought, you know, because a special case. I agree with that. He's a very special case. That's a rare case. He's I, I, one of the only guys that I can sit here and say is a yeah. better MC at 50 than he was at 25. And he was great at 25. You know, he's not just a buzzword flea market mixtape. I listen to these artists very closely. And 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 again, when you're when when you talk to I'm from the era where you talk to your OGs, right? If you need advice, you go talk to your OG. Well, why are we talking to our OGs for? Because they have the experience. They have the knowledge and they 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 know what they're talking about they live so, through all stages of life when you come up i uh, 20 21 year olds come up you know they they try to test the older folks all the time and then they get corrected right and then they're like oh now i see what you were saying this is because yeah. wisdom comes with that age folks so thinking that you're going to be a bet you're going to be a worse rapper when you're 40 i don't know if that's the case I don't know. Uh, Maddox with the super chat says Pac 1A, Nas 1B. What are we talking about? Um, uh, you know what? This is what I will say, though, and to your point. I would wonder if some of Pac's, um, how do I say it, approaches to certain subject matter would change if he was 30, 35 years old. Now, I don't know if they would. I think we can kind of look at people like Ice Cube and maybe uh, Chuck D as an example of that. Like, how did Ice Cube's music change from early 20s Ice Cube to Ice Cube in his 30s? And what right. pocket went down the same route? Were you saying something, Ron? Dude, I was on mute, man. I was I was trying to say something real quick. Yeah, <laughs> I was I'm on mute. Off moving, but yeah, I was like, what's going on? I, I thought y'all was just ignoring me, man. But no, I was saying, I the point that I was trying to make, I think Jake, I didn't want to bring this back to J. Cole, but I think J. Cole at 39, almost 40, is a better J. Cole than he is at, was at 22, 23. That's just me. But when, you, when you're 39, when you're 39, you could go out in front of a crowd full of people and apologize and feel no way about it. Because your maturity at that level does not require other people's approval. You are going to, I'm going to say what I'm going to say. And if you don't like it, I don't care. And I'll say it in front of all these fans because I'm 39 year old. I'm 39 and I don't care anymore. Now he did cave for them and send the shot. But what I'm saying is when you reach a certain level, certain maturity comes with that. I do not believe the same records we heard at Pac in his 20s is what we would have heard in his 30s. I believe it would have been different about it. 
I believe he, you would have saw more size, but I believe it would have became more human for you. When it, when we talk about Ice Cube, Ice Cube, not to us, but to America, you had the FBI sending this dude letter saying, please, can you stop because your records might start a real revolution, right? He was scary to the establishment, right? Because his music was that powerful and it was that um, urging you to, to physically fight for your freedom, right? Then, pop, then um, Cube showed a different side, right? We get to see fatherhood. We get to see um, Friday. We get to see Friday. You know, he's a regular dude from the hood. Then we get to see Barbershop. We get to see um, a different Ice Cube. He's Are not we there yet. He's not scary anymore. We got to we uh, last week, um, Mike, when you were talking about uh, we be clubbing, right? That was the soundtrack to the strip club. At one point, the strip club is a part of our lives. We we go to the strip club. You know what I mean? So we get different sides. I believe Pac would have said, "Okay, I was doing the the street thing. Now I'm I'm gonna put that down and I'm gonna do something else. Whatever that something else is." It would be what it was, but I believe he would put that down because regardless of who you think you are, when you hit a certain age, you are going in the house. When the homies come through to, to go do some stuff, you would be like, "Nah, y'all go do that." I, well, you know, I mean, I'm, a lot you know? of a lot of Pac stuff was so socially conscious, even in records that didn't seem like they were socially conscious. Like, how do you want it? Yeah, I don't think any of that would have waned off. I think that would have gotten stronger. Now, to your point about Ice Cube in the movies. Now, if Pac is doing more movies, mm -hmm. then his content could possibly change because at, back then you had soundtracks. And if he did do a, a, a movie like a, um, um, what is it, Players Club or something like that, and is asked to do the soundtrack of it, him as an artist, he's going to do some things within that vein. And that probably doesn't fit into the socially conscious Pac. But even with Above the Rim, Pull out a little liquors on there. Now I know it's on Thug Life, but it's on there. Pain mm -hmm. is on there. So he was able to stay himself even on soundtrack records. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah Pac had a lot going on. And the difference between uh, 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 I'm a Pac fan, and the difference between a lot of Pac fans is me, is they're like, well, Pac did this and Pac did that. And I'm like, yeah, he did do that because I saw him do it. But what are we going to do moving forward? I'm a forward thinking person. What are we going to do? about what Pac did, use that energy and do something forward in the future. Because I do not believe Pac would be like, yeah, let's all talk about everything that I did a long time ago, but we don't have nothing to talk about right now. You know, a you lot know, of- the point. I think his influence is everywhere, right? Like even the tattoos, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm trying to think of a rapper that was tatted up like that before Pac on a mainstream level. And I think what, the mainstream did and what artists after him did they took some of the more less favorable traits but then take the socially conscious traits of Pac. you know what i mean like they took the thug life thing and furthered that, but they didn't further the brenda's got a baby Pac. they didn't further exactly. thank you thank and, you thank you thank you and i think that is the part that that is interesting because maybe maybe the thug life Pac is easier to duplicate for people. I don't know. Of course it is. Well, of course it is. If I tell you, let's go tear some stuff up, right? You don't got you. You're with that. You're with that energy. If I say, you, you know what, read a book to do that. <laughs> yeah. If I say, you know what, let's go ride on these fools, right? You know what I'm saying? They came through disrespected. Let's go ride on them. You're gonna be with that because you like that energy, right? If I say, let's go build something. Let's go take a part of the community. Let's go build something constructive. And let, you, you'd probably be like, nah, you know, I'm not really with that. And this is because y'all got the thug life energy, but y'all didn't take the acronym serious. And if you took, and if we're taking it serious, you, you people out there, you're not gonna be able to play with me. I'm not somebody that you play with. If you take it serious and you see me in the comments, we we can we can really do something. And I'm not talking about anything violence. I'm talking about building something positive and constructive for hip hop moving forward for the community for i'm talking about positive work if you really care that much then let's roll up our sleeves and and do something about it because that's what thug life was supposed to really be about now i'm down for that right, but if we, right. yeah if we, if we just gonna tear something up I, I don't think that's what i know that's not what Pac was was, was talking about 
Yo, you let's put a, let's, let, let's put a closing thought on this Pac conversation. We were talking about Pac. Shout out to Pac. We we respect his legacy. Let's go. Let's let's go on the next topic. Um, but I just want to say, if you got thoughts about Pac, hit us up at info at accordinghiphop dot com. Put it put it in the chat. Hit like and subscribe. Y'all already know where I'm at with Pac. Pac's my top three. I listen to Pac as I get older. You know, as I get older and older, Pac is more on my Spotify. But let's talk about uh, Pete Rock. Pete Rock. We got, we got a producer. We got a Pete seven. Rock. Top seven. Top, top seven, oh, yeah, top yeah, seven. Yeah, yeah. We got a um a producer t- tournament. You know, March Madness just ended. Now we got this little producer. Who's the greatest hip hop producer bracket that we got from recording hip hop that's coming out that might kind of curate it and put together. Pete Rock was on Instagram last week and he put his Mount Rushmore of producers on it. Let me pull the graphic up real quick. And uh he was on IG. And he said that uh, his Mount Rushmore consists of 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 oh, DJ yeah. Premier, large large Premier, yeah. large professor. You got DJ Premier. You got uh, Eric Sermon and himself. So, Mike, let me ask you, Leroy. Let me ask you, who's on your Mount Rushmore of producers before we get into the bracket in the tournament? Ooh, he had a good list, though. I I kind of like his list. <laughs> I like this list too. Hold on, let me go to these super chats before we get too too far off of it. Rigomatic says Cole made a whole disc mixtape ahead of his upcoming album. Now he wants to act like he ain't uh just jump off the porch. Nah, homie, we seen you. Okay. I think there was another one. Yeah, Mad Max says X's voice. He did uh I'm sorry, he did better than big. He can make party records, street records, joints for women while being him. Um did you get this other one from Ridgematic? Pac 1A, Nas 1B? We got yeah, that yeah, one? Yeah, yeah, I got that one up from Rigomatic. Um, You know, I, I think that for me personally, huh, this is tough. I got to be honest, man. I think it's a, oh, is this a unbiased, is a personal favorite or just who should be on the four? It's who should be on the four and no personal favorite. Who who should now? Nah, I mean, I guess you got to mix the personal with who should be on it. I mean, go ahead. And you, just off the top, who the top four producers of all time? What does no? What does Mount Rushmore actually stand for? Right? It's a uh, the best. I don't know what it stands no, for. It's, no, no, it's, it's, it's actually, presidents. No, no, no. It, they didn't do it like that. They did. I'm gonna look this up real quick. They chose to represent the nation's birth, growth, development, and preservation respectfully. So. Okay. So yeah, George Washington represents the nation's birth. Thomas Jefferson represents the growth. Um, Theodore Roosevelt is the development and preservation is Abraham Lincoln. So if we're going to go with that theme of birth, growth, development, and preservation. The birth, I might have to go with Rick Rubin. <laughs> uh, he's starting off wrong. <laughs> I mean, either Larry Smith or Rick Rubin. I mean, what about Marley? Ma- what about Marley? Ma- what about Marley Ma? I can go with Marley. Okay, oh, yeah, I can you go with Marley with Bird. You tripping, man? You tripping, you tripping, okay. man. You tripping bro? <laughs> I, I went early, early. You know what I'm saying? Because if we're talking about the birth and the birth of 16 bar uh, verses and eight bar hooks, that's Rick Rubin and LL. They created that. They created that blueprint that we go on from um, bar, hook, bar, hook. They did. So, I mean, but I'm, I can go with Molly for the birth and the growth. I might go with Dre. Yeah, Dre got to be in there. You know. The development. Dre yeah, gotta be. That might be Premier. In preservation, Kanye West. Good night. <laughs> yeah. All right, all right, Leroy. What's 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 your thought? Not a bad list, my brother. Okay, so we're picking four guys, right? Yeah, I'm I'm a, I'm a, a, a hip hop boom boom bap kind of guy, and um, speak. People are like, "Where's your where's your stuff at?" I'm getting a lot of beautiful soul samples that I can tell were inspired by Kanye. So. I just want to shout out I shout out to that beautiful soul samples that I'm hearing and I you know those are great. Um I'm a I'm a more harder person. I'm I'm a harder person. So Primo would be one. Then I got to go Dre, you know, what West Side. Then RZA. Then I'm going to go Ninth Wonder. You oh, know yeah. like 
That's now, not if I'm going on my personal, I'm probably going to go RZA, Pete, Dre. Hmm. Pete is not. Q-tip and Q-Tip. If I'm going personal. Yeah. No, it's not bad. Let, let, let me jump in. I'm going to mix it up. I'm gonna mix it up a little bit. So if you say I, 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 I'm gonna go by your criteria, Mike. You say birth. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say Marley Mall. You I'm know what I'm saying? That. I'm gonna say that. Um, what was the second one? Development. Development. I'm gonna no, say. No, no, I'm sorry. Birth. Growth. Growth is the second one. Growth. I'm gonna say growth. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say Dr. Dre. What's the third one? Uh, that's development. I'm gonna have to add five people to Mount Rushmore. So development, <laughs> development. I'm gonna, do, I'm gonna do Pete Rock and, and DJ Premier as like synonymous as uh, yeah, for that preservation. Preservation. I'm gonna go Kanye West. Christopher Hogan with the super chat says, "Listen to Pac's interviews. Straight wisdom." Uh, Mr. Smith says, uh, "Pac had a lot of positive messages in his music." When he was just conscious, no one was really listening. He wanted to put the medicine in the candy. I became a lawyer because of young niggas on um, Me Against the World. That's awesome. Shout out to Mrs. Smith. Lawyer out here because of Tupac. I mean, that's that whole Chuck D and having Flavor Flav there thing. I mean, they have Flav there for the entertainment. Yo, yo, what's good? (laughs) <laughs> he getting his hip hop knowledge right. He getting his hip hop knowledge real. Go on upstairs. Yeah, but yeah, they have Flav there so the people could take in those messages. Because if it was just Chuck there saying everything that he's saying without Flav being the, you know, what I'm saying the hype man there, it would have went across different. I mean, do we feel like? I mean, is Flav probably the more famous member of Public Enemy between the two? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah. So it worked. I mean, that was the yeah. point. Flav, Flav, we saw Flav. He was like, "Hey, there go my uncle." You know, not now. You know what I'm saying? Though, someone relatable. You know what I'm saying? But, right. but, but what I'm saying is, when are we gonna turn the corner? Now it's great. We can talk about Pac all day because what he did was great. We all know it was great. But at some point, hip hop is going to have to turn a corner. That means. We're gonna leave. We're gonna have to leave some stuff behind. Not leave a person behind, or artist behind, or music behind. But we're gonna have to leave some of our mentality behind, some of our old mentality. Now, if we know Pac was trying to funnel in some positive messages in his music, and we're not standing on that, then what we're actually doing is just just having fun, and we're not being serious. So, whenever whenever hip hop's ready to turn that corner, y'all let me know. Okay. Bomb Squad, Dre, Eric Sermon, and Organized Noise. Okay, man. I don't want to get my uh, Atlanta card taken from me. I love Organized, but I think that outside of the dungeon and that run, trying to think of uh, some organized production that, you know, kept going. I know well, Backbone's the dungeon, too. They did some stuff on Ludacris stuff. Uh, I know they did some joints on Streets as a Mother. So I love that album, Corrupt. Shout out to Corrupt. But I think that huh, Organized might have had a shorter run than I want to admit. But I think they were so ahead of the curve that, you know, they got to be in the conversation. We have Bob Squad. Short run, too, if we're going to be fair. Crazy. If you, what, 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 so this is where I want to go. Huh? Back when I was listening to Pac, you would have thought I was from Atlanta, though, because I was listening to so much organized noise. It, yeah. Outcast and Goody Mob, they was basically my go-to. Like, You know what I mean? So. Yeah. Well, see, this is where I want to go from here, though. And since we're talking about producers and their runs, because I think producers have a certain pocket of time in hip-hop. I mean, even if we're looking at, even if we're looking at Rick, Rick Rubin, even if we're looking at Bomb Squad, even if we're looking at Molly Mall, what mm. should be the criteria that people are voting on when it comes to this tournament bracket? And we got to break down some real criteria. I want to hear from the people in the chat. Like, what should the producer criteria be for an all time uh, tournament for the greatest hip hop producers of all time? 
let's try to go for five criteria to start. And if we add more on there. Right, right. As they're getting the criteria together, Mike, we left some folks out, man. So who do we who leave? Do we out? leave out? I'm looking at the I'm looking at the old show. They said we left Salam Remy out. We left Salam Remy out. Okay. Um, we left Salam Remy out. Um Beat Nuts, Marco Polo. What is this? Uh, let me see. Let me see. I like Marco Polo. Shout out to Marco Polo. Him and um uh, who, who else? Who else? Ace just made a great album. Who else did we leave out? Some folks say we left out some folks, man. I mean, you know, it's 64 slots. Marco all Polo, of them are great. So it's like it's it some great people are gonna be left out. I mean, we can't keep adding. Um Okay, originality I think should be there. Mm-hmm. I mean, are we gonna go original? Yeah, I think originality okay. kind of covers it all because I see diversity of sound, but I think that falls under the originality umbrella, right? That falls under the originality umbrella. I'm saying yeah. this innovation like, kind of. Okay, Long- uh, longevity. Yeah, I was gonna say longevity. Um, the longevity of production, though, kind of belongs to a handful of guys. And those are probably going to be the guys who end up in the top four, probably. So, yep. okay, here's my question for longevity. How do you rate somebody like Pete Rock's longevity, who has, has, has constantly been doing records since 92? Same thing with Alchemist. Are we going to give Alchemist the credit he deserves because – He's been killing it for the past 10 years. Whereas, like, if we're putting Alchemist versus a Just Blaze, Just ain't putting in the work on a longevity standpoint like Alchemist is. Alchemist, I mean, they both started around a similar time. But, but Just Blaze, though. I almost yeah. said Just Blaze. So then we got to go Impact, too. Just Blaze, you know. Uh, again, you can be around for a long time, Pete Rock. Love, love Pete Rock. I just watched an old video of, of Pete Rock uh, last night, you know, but another story. But um, love Pete Rock. But when you step into the game and you really do something uh, and you hold down your time period, I said Ninth Wonder, right? And people are like, Ninth Wonder? Like, why would you even say that? Well, at, at a particular time, um, the the beats that were a quarter million dollars or you know, a quarter million dollar beats, they fell off because the artists, the labels wasn't going to keep paying that. So what happened was, um, well, music started being free. You know, it was on, it was online. Ninth Wonder steps in. His, his first big thing, of course, with Jay and um, with the threats, but you have Little Brother, you have um, Sky Zoo, you have Murs, you have his sound that he ushered in. It was it it, it was a soul sample sound, but it, it was coming really fast. Like he had something out religiously a lot, you know what I mean? And he held down that space for a lot of us that were into that sound that wasn't gonna try to go get a beat that costs as much as a house. <laughs> you know what I, mean? I think I agree with Vinyl Wars. I think um Troy might be the greatest beat of all time. I've always said that. I mean, I think it's it's fucking phenomenal. And we got an interview dropping. We got an interview dropping, Mike. We got an interview dropping. Yeah, well, we and when we drop that Pete Rock interview, uh, we should be dropping next week. He talks about. Well, I don't know if he said. Yeah, he did say it in the interview. There's some things in that track from a um, from a technical standpoint that lets you know why. You know, that track feels so full because when I hear that track, if I just dropped in from space and I heard that track, I couldn't put 1992 on it sonically. Like it sounds so far ahead of everything else that was coming out at that time. Um, I do think that, okay, originality, longevity, right? Classic songs. Is that fair? Classic songs should be. should be albums. Classic albums, classic songs, longevity. And I mean, sh- I mean, you know what? I want to be fair, not to cut you off. Hip hop songs, because that's what separates Timbaland and other guys. I don't think Timbaland has a lot of classic hip hop songs. He got a lot of classic songs. Most of them are R&B. Yeah. I mean, wh- I'm trying to think what classic hip hop. You got Dirt Off Your Shoulder. You got... um. You got Big Pimpin'. 
if that's his class. You got Big Pimpin. You got um. You got, I, I, I'm not even gonna say this on on, on air because they here got no class. Get your freak on or something. Timberland and Magoo, shit. No. No man. No. no. Hey, but Timberland, Timberland innovated something though. Now he innovated. He did. You put know, you on, again, put you, game, put, you the game, too. put you on the game. You got on fire with uh, Lloyd Banks. You got um, shit, in relation, I, the Neptune's hip hop catalog crushes that, crushes that. It does. You got grinding. What does he have against grinding? Then you got shit. Give it to me. You can put uh, that up. See. Yeah, hey Poppy, you got Hey Poppy. You got is that your chick? Better record. I love. Is that your chick? You got One Minute Man. I don't know, man. You right. You might be right, Mike. Yeah, man. Know. Shake it fast. Like they're all over the board. Southern hospitality. Like they got, they got joints on a hip hop level. They got Pastor Gavarcia. They got bangers on a hip hop level. Like Timlin doesn't even register when it comes to them on a hip hop level. So I want to put. Classic hip hop songs, classic hip hop albums. Since we're talking about hip hop producers, Jermaine Johnson with the super chat says, Where should Diddy be ranked as a producer? We all understand that he doesn't make beats. However, his ear and orchestration is responsible for what we feel like half of the hit songs of our lifetime. It's a good question. I look at Diddy, and I, and I said this kind of when uh, Diddy and Jermaine were going to do their verses. I kind of look at Diddy as more of an executive producer. Um, and that's pretty dope too, but we would have to put him up against the LA Reeds of the world as opposed to the guys that put their hands on the machine. So, Paul. Yeah, I mean, I think Diddy, you know, I think he can make make beats, but if he hires a group of people, you know what I mean, to make a specific sound, you know what I mean? And I think everybody who raps should probably do that, right? Then he's a producer. He get, hey, I want this person to do my drums. I want that person to do my strings. I want that person to do my horns. He, you know, he uh, he's a producer in that sense, you know, because the bad boy sound it came out of his brain. He didn't <laughs> press the buttons, but that's right. that came out of his brain. Well, know? all right, this is kind of how I look at it too. And I've seen people put Mike Dean in the chat when we were going through like the top you know, I guess not top five, but five of the most notable tracks from these individual producers, I found a hard time finding my notable Mike Dean track where it was just his name on it. And the same thing with Diddy. If we could find a bunch of tracks where it's just um, Sean Combs' produced name on it, fine. But every time we see his tracks, it's Chucky Thompson. It's, uh, you know what I'm saying, tone, tone and pope. Like, it's always in concert with somebody else that we know is a notable producer and who does have credits by themselves. So I just think that producers like that might have another bracket where, you know, it's not fair to be able to go against somebody like a Pete Rock or a Dilla that we know did this stuff by themselves. You know what I'm saying? No, that's true. That's true. I was just, I was throwing it out. I still got to respect it for what it is, though, but that's oh, no. true. Great. Primo, Primo touches the beats by himself, you know, uh, so he's the only one making the beats and he's, you know, going crazy. So, you know, that's right, I got originality, longevity, classic hip hop songs, classic hip hop albums. They're saying, why does Dre get a pass for that then, Mike? Okay, let's talk about it. I knew Dre was going to come up. Right. There are songs where Dr. Dre is credited by himself, aren't they? Um, the big, the big okay. records are just some records. Okay, let's do this while we're online. Let me pull up the chronic. Because I thought Mailman was all over 2001. He was. He I was. thought Daz was all over. The, Daz said he made all that shit on the chronic. Be, well, be. He didn't get credited for it. All right, so when I pull up G thing, it says produced by Dr. Dre. <laughs> he didn't get credit with Dad, so he made it. He made the rest. That's what he says, you know. But I mean, I gotta go with what's documented. I can't go I mean, with his, his, his paperwork. His paperwork might not have been straight. You know what I mean? Yeah, Dre that Day. Dre Day, produced by Dr. Dre. Mm -hmm. Let me ride. Produced by Dr. J. Hey, I hear, I hear a little Daz. I hear a little Daz and let me ride, man. I'm gonna be for real I'm with you. To discredit Dre. I ain't discrediting Dre. I'm just saying I hear a little Daz in it. You do too. You hear Daz in that? 
Daz is an incredible producer. Daz I Dillon. Know if I hear Daz and let me ride. Let me yeah. ride. Is crazy. Hold, on, hold on. Let me get this off. Let me get this off. Daz yeah. Dillon is an incredible producer. But but the thing about Daz Dillinger is he's touching every key on that board by himself. Can you imagine if if you know what Daz Dillinger is capable of? Can you imagine what it would sound like if he hired a team of producers? That That's would true. sound it would sound so insane. This man's musicality is so, but it's only him. So when he's doing everything, you can't just do everything and then still take it up to a certain level. If Daz Dillinger, and, and, and please don't think I'm disrespecting you, Daz Dillinger. That's not what's going on here. Because again, he's incredible at what he does. If yeah. he hired other producers, though, he might be one of, you know, top four, top, he, top five. He may be that. You know what I mean? That's how okay. incredible. Let me play. No, 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 no. Let me clear up. I didn't say Daz did let me ride. I said I hear a little bit of a li little bit of his sound from Let Me Ride. I didn't say he did that. Let me clear that up. Oh man, listen. That the way that the way that Dr. Dre or whoever chopped up that uh mothership connection is crazy, man. Like even yeah. down to the dun, 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 dun. like that shit is amazing. That's one of the best chopped up. Yeah, let me let me let me, clear, let, me, let me let me clear that up. You know, it's my birthday. I'm gonna sip in a little bit. You know, what I mean, I just want to make sure I came across correct. I'm not oh. saying Daz made that. I'm saying I hear how Daz took a little bit from that, incorporating his sound. That's what I meant. Let me clear well, that up. Yeah, but see, even when you talk about that sound, and I, I will go back. We'll go back to uh, the NWA stuff. Where uh, Dr. Dre sampled, uh, what was that? Ohio Players, the uh, the Caterpillar record or whatever. With the like, he created that sound that Daz kind of rolled with. With um, what would you do and things like that. So yeah, I hear you, but <laughs> the sound that you're saying sounds like Daz. Dr. Dre actually created years before Daz even came around. Well, I, I, I gotta, I gotta push back. For Daz Dilly, I got put back with Daz Dillinger. Look, Dr. Dre. Yeah, I got to man. I got Dr. Dre did come first, so we. It does look like Dre was the um, the creator of all this, and we know Dre is is fire, man. We know Dre, but Daz has so much going on in his music, and it sounds like it's coming more natural to him than it does to Dr. Dre. And I'm and you know, of course, Daz had a long career, but I'm talking about in the 90s when Daz is doing his own thing, you hear a kind of Dreish sound. It's just he doesn't have the engineering skills that that Dre had that Dre well, had. Man. Had Daz had them same engineering skills, it would have rang off, you know. Um, retaliation get back. What, what's his debut album? To me, that's classic. Um re retaliation get back and uh whatever. Ever, revenge, revenge, retaliation, and get back. You know what yeah. I mean? Well, that's I mean, classic. You know, had that been Dr. engineered Dr. different, engineering, cool. Dr. Dre's engineering skills set him apart from everybody, in my opinion. Uh, I don't think there is a producer <laughs> in hip hop that has the engineering talent that Dre has, and I think that's probably his golden ticket. But to answer people's question, though. Yeah, I think Dre is a little different than Puff because he does have credits where it's just him now. I mean, are there other credits on the NWA stuff? Because if we go to Niggas for Life, is Yella's name on there? Or is it just Dre? Because I know The Chronic is just Dre. I know Doggy Style. <laughs> I know what y'all are going to say. But as far as credit-wise, it's just Dre. You know, that, that it is what it is. Even though they it's say that Dad's made most of those beats on the bus during the tour or whatever but when you look up when you look up what's my name it says produced by dr dre it's all it says I mean, dre, dre on his best day is killing everybody you know on his best day we're all dead you know what i mean like he'll go in the studio and make some th stuff we can't get by like it's to be too crazy now, <laughs> he has the cheat code when it comes to his longevity but what i will say and this is something that pox said it's like he's living off of the, you know what I'm saying, the NWA shit. Well, this, these are Pac's words, not mine. I'm paraphrasing. Mm -hmm. He said that, you know, Dre don't make beats. Is what That's what Tupac said. So 
maybe the longevity comes from him starting off as a beat maker or starting off as a producer that was more hands on per se and graduating into a producer that now is kind of bringing in people and engineering more than actually creating the production. And so if you guys want to knock him on the longevity in, like, let's just say against somebody like DJ Premier, who's been hands on the whole time, I think that would be fair from a longevity standpoint. If we're going, who has the better longevity? Is it Premier or Dre? And not to mention all those breaks. Do we factor that in? Mm. So l- l- let's go. I'm, I'm going to do some digging real quick. What was Daz's beef with the chronic? Well, he was saying that he... I know he put out a report a couple of years ago saying he wasn't getting royalties from that joint. What was he saying that he did and he needed credit for? Uh, well, shit, let's look it up. That's uh, the chronic. Credit. Um, which is a serious thing. You know what I mean? But I, mean, I, think, I think he worked it out. Okay, I think here. he worked it I think they worked it out. But um, now I got the, Well, they probably did. It says uh, Daz has put Dr. Dre on blast over alleged unpaid royalties for his work on the chronic. The dog pound rapper who contributed rapping and production to the blockbuster 1992 album called out his former mentor on Instagram for not coughing up his payments for his work. It says happy 31st C day to the chronic. But when we um when we receive our royalties, when are we gonna receive our royalties? Are you <laughs> or Interscope gonna rob us like death row in 2024? Uh the niggas from the past who ran who ran it. Straight bitches. Fuck. Daz claims that uh, the rights to his work reverted back to him in 2027 and that he won't be clearing anything to do. I'm sorry. It won't be clearing anything to do with the tracks he contributed to to unless he is paid for what he believes he is owed. So he's saying he claims that the rights to his work will be reverted back to him in 2027. So in 2027, when we go on Wikipedia, these songs are going to say produced by Daz, I guess. I don't know. I mean, I'm just right saying. Now, we can't. We got to go on what we see. We need to pull up on Daz and do an interview to find out. I mean, whatever the case may be, Dr. Dre is great. He's on my Mount Rushmore of producers. So I don't care. I, I'm, I, we have that argument all the time. It's a producer, more of an arranger. He's like a Quincy Jones of hip hop. I, I I don't care who was in the with, with him when he was making the beat. Dr. Dre is still one of the greatest producers of all time. I don't. If I go to the lab. I don't want to see Dr. Dre pushing the buttons. I want to see Dr. Dre where he stands by the speaker. If there's video footage of him in the studio. He's standing by the speaker and he's just going like that. Then he stops. Yep. There he's up. No. Yep. No. He's not pushing the button. I don't want to see him pushing the buttons because he got people to do that. He got people that can push buttons, and some of those people that push buttons are the best people. Um. You know what's that guy's name? Uh, Danan uh, from Eminem's camp. Then you got um, yeah, Hill, you got Khalil. You got High Tech was there for a moment. You got um, you got different people. Um, High that Tech are- almost got left off the tournament, man. That was kind of a last minute <laughs> entry, and I'm like, what am I doing? High Tech needs to be here. Right. High Tech so had I- a strong five too. I don't need him to press the buttons as long as he's okay in the fin- the final product. You know, but I, I hear everybody that says Nas Rock him three ho. Uh he says Nas one, two rock him, three ho. But today, tomorrow, I don't know. Four LL, five Pac, six KRS, seven Q, eight DMX, nine Biggie slash Scarface, ten <laughs> Biggie slash Scarface. Uh, my new objective top ten, eleven Kane, uh twelve Ray, thirteen Ghost, fourteen Snoop. Fifteen, I don't know yet. That's a really good list, though, man. Max, shout that's out to a, that's, that's that's a really good list. That's a really good list. The only one I let me put the list back up. The only one I question <coughs> is number. I think LL is a little too high, but you know that's just you know I would put to me I got KRS over LL, but that's just me my me my personal opinion. But I don't know. I don't know. I I look at Snoop Dogg. The same way I look at Pac, no, I'm not comparing the two. Listen first. Pa- Snoop is an icon. He's not no list guy. So how do we rank Snoop Dogg? You know what I mean? Because Snoop Dogg really technically, he could be like, man, I've been more popping and done way more stuff than everybody here. And no one's going to be able to argue with that. Yeah. <laughs> so 
what are we gonna like some people how do you rank that because you may not like his music not you guys but i'm just the chat some people may not like his music when he goes outside i seen him i seen snoop dogg at a raider game it was pandemonium when yeah, he goes out yeah his music affects and it impacts so how do you rank I mean, snoop? what what is that super bowl stage without snoop out there not yeah. you know it, it's not the same it's not like, Snoop is Dr. Dre's rap career, in my opinion. Like when we see Dre out there on stage rapping, you gotta have Snoop there. You have to. Uh 8 a.m. exposure. Shout out to LT out there. He says, Mike, God bless. Uh wanting to speak on M slash Dre. You trying to get in um 8 a.m. exposure? Sure. You can get in and talk about it. But I, I, that's gonna be up to you guys how y'all rate Dr. Dre. And uh, in relation to some of his peers, because we got originality, longevity, classic hip hop songs, classic hip hop albums. It's going to be tough to beat Dre in those two departments. What else do we have now? Impact. It's going to be I tough to beat Dre in that department, too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so that's five right there. Do we have uh, any more criteria? I'm going raw skill. I'm going primo over everybody. Because what I was going to say, and since we're doing a, a producer contest, and I want like the producers and the MCs to really get involved in this on top of the tournament, I think that to have some sort of a criteria, like which producer would you rather have a beat from? If you had to pick a beat and you was a rapper, if you had to mm -hmm. pick a beat, I like diversity. We'll throw that on there. If you had to pick a beat from these two guys, which one are you getting a beat from first? With Dre and who? No, I'm just saying in the tournament, I think that should be a criteria. Like whoever oh, right, right, right. is against each other. Like if we got, let's got just it. say like Eric Sermon and, and Rick Rubin or whatever, and you had to choose who you're getting a beat from as an MC, who are you getting mm. that beat from? Eric Sermon, you know, the green eye bandit. <laughs> so is that a fair uh, piece of criteria, you think? Yeah. Yeah. No, I like it. Okay, cool. So that's seven right there. We've got originality, longevity, classic hip hop songs, classic hip hop albums, impact, diversity. And who would you pick a beat from? That's fire. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, we'll get that out there on the tournament so people have something to base it off of. Um, I know people are going to pick their favorites anyway, and it should be really exciting because, yeah, we're getting hit with all kind of spam. Come on, mods. Hook us up real quick. <laughs> um, right. But, yeah, I mean, I think that this is going to get really, really exciting. I think all the matchups are there. You got the matchups on, uh, on the screen, Ron? No, I don't have the matchups there because I had to plug okay. in the new ones. We took it out. But you can okay. kind of run it, run it down, run it down just verbally real quick. Well, I have to pull it up real quick. Um, let's see. Uh, hold on, give me one second because we got so many documents here. Who is high tech seeing in the first round? Man, they're killing us with the spam in here today. That's <laughs> right. Who's, who's spamming? Uh, we got locker some room. dude in here, the locker room or something. Locker <laughs> What's he talking about? Locker room talk. Yeah, we gotta block this spam. Guy. Who's, this, who's this dude? I don't know. We gotta, we gotta block him. It happens. Uh, let's see. I'm going through it high right. Tech, tech too, though. I don't think High Tech had enough. You know, had enough of a run. I think he got hot, and then he was like, "I'm gonna go chill with Dr. Dre," and then that, when we never heard from him again, <laughs> you know what I mean? Do you think that that's the thing, though? You think it's like. Dr. Yeah. Dre sees what producers popping and he's able to go kind of, yeah. you know, bring them in and mentor them, if you will. Yeah, yeah if so I'm making beats, very accomplished. If I'm making beats and Dr. Dre gives me a, a phone call, I'm sorry, but I gotta go. Respect to everybody. <laughs> I respect to everybody I was working with, but I'm not turning down Dr. Dre's phone call. I gotta go. If he wants it's me to make run. Because anything yeah. Dr. Dre's doing, you know, is going to sell. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Right. A, a percentage of a half a point 
is going to get make me a, a quarter million dollars every four months. I'm sorry, I'm gone. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm gone. Good. Man, back to the super yeah. chat. We're doing producers, MCs that they brought in should count um, uh, because they all the time, the all time greats all brought in MCs, which show uh, that Hit Boy is not top 10. Okay, so he said, if we're doing producers, MCs that they brought in should count because they're all time greats. All brought in, all, the all time greats all brought in an MC, which shows that Hit Boy is not top 10. Okay. I kind of like that. Um, hmm. I can fight that. I can fight I like that, that more. Where it's like, you know, who did you bring in? Because, you know, when you look at Eric Sermon, he brought in Redman, right? When you look at Q-Tip, he gets credit for Tribe. KG, um, credit for um, Naughty by Nature. And Queen Latifah to some degree. Um, we replaced LP. Hmm. Okay. These are some of the matchups. I hear that argument though, but Hit Boy wasn't supposed to bring in nobody. Hit Boy was uh under Polo G, right? Or like Polo G, and he was put in position to Wait, make no, um yeah, what was it? Am I saying the guy's name right? Polo or um po I think it's Polo G. Oh, but right. I don't know. Are you talking about the artist, Polo G? The he was uh, he he was under brought in by an artist like the guy who did uh throw them D's on it yeah yeah that's uh, Polo that's Polo okay yeah. okay so so he was brought in Hit Boy brought him in I mean he brought in Hit Boy Hit Boy was working with um some dudes from L A I think Audio Push and mm -hmm. uh, maybe maybe some other dudes but then Hit Boy his sound um. he he was brought in to make sound for a bunch of artists like to move a label. Um, Hit Boy is not to to just move one or two artists. Hit Boy's job is to move ten artists. So it's not the same as um, the other people. You know what I mean? That just came in, they had their friends, or they moved certain artists. Hit Boy's job is to move a whole label, and that's a thing too. Like there are some producers that are some of the greatest producers of all time. But if you can if you can move ten artists, then I might have to rock with you because you I could there's a lot I could do with you because your sound can work for 10 artists but maybe some other guy is really better than you and he can make something for a few artists and he's better than you but if you can move 10 artists I got to rock with you Dr. and that's great stuff to beat in that department too Jermaine yeah. Johnson with the super chat says Mike instead of just the beat better criteria a better criteria would be who do you want to have produce and slash orchestrate an entire album for you I like that too now, let's let's kind of do a warm up matchup, right? The first round, we got Swiss Beats and Just Blaze going at it. Now, hmm. from an originality standpoint, who you going with, Swiss Beats or Just Blaze? Ooh, just Just Blaze or what? Say again, Just Blaze or who? Swiss Beats or Just Blaze from an originality standpoint. Um, mm, I'll go just because just, you know, he, his sound just hit harder, but I, you know, I, I like Swiss and I know a lot of people don't like that, that sound, but when it came time for him to deliver again, his job was to move the needle for Jay-Z and DMX. That's not an easy ask at all because how, like, how am I going to move that? You know, these guys want to come off the street and go 10 times platinum. And Swiss was able to figure that out. Swiss was like 18 years old, maybe even younger. He just got his first beat machine. He's learning it as he's making the beats. And you know what I mean? Now, I know people, they may be like, we can hear it. And we don't like that. But them well, early days. The argument be that Swiss didn't sample as much as Just. And that takes away from his originality. And I'm glad. And I, I wanted to bring Just in the argument because do we count sampling as originality? I do, depending on how you do it. Right. Same. Um, I feel the same way. LP says, uh, with the Super Chat says, send the link, y'all. We're going to get you in there, LP. Um, okay, so from a longevity standpoint, I think Swiss got that one. Okay. I'm not, I'm not mad. Classic hip-hop songs. Oh, this is interesting. To me... To me, man, I'm, I'm going. I'm going. Just plays. 
Yeah, I'm a just blaze guy. I don't yeah, know how- to me, I'm going to. So, Ooh, so I say just blaze yeah. just don't have a Rough Riders anthem though. Well, he got a you don't know in the PSA and a what we do is wrong and an old oh boy. He got anthems. He got yeah. anthems. You know Classic I mean? albums. Neither one of them really made albums. Right. Right. By um, default, I might go with Swiss because I think he was closer to making full albums than Just was. And he made okay. his own full albums. Um, I, I might impact. go to- just got album. He got the albums with Saigon, early Saigon. Yeah, he does. You know? Impact. Mm. That's, a, that's, uh. a that's a tie, right? <laughs> I, y'all, y'all know that I'm not a huge Swiss fan, but I'm a huge Just fan. I think the impact goes to Swiss, man. I'm not mad at that. I'm not mad at that. Diversity. Huh. I think that might go to Swiss too. Swiss too. Swiss. Damn, Swiss is like killer. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. who would I rather want to beat from or produce a whole album? That's Just. So just. originality, Just got. Longevity, Swiss got. Classic hip hop songs, Just. Impact. Yeah, it looked like Swiss won this one. Yeah, Swiss they is a monster. But I, I know what I know. I think that Just is the better producer, and I probably would vote Just in this first round. So, okay, we can do one more. I'm just giving you guys a preview of the uh, bracket. Hold on. Let's see. What's another good one to do? Um, That last meal was me. All right. We got... <laughs> this is a good one. Ninth Wonder and Easy Mo V. I let Ron go. You want to take it, Ron? Because I'm, I'm gonna go. You know, I'm gonna go ninth. You know. Okay. Originality. I'm a ninth wonder fan. Okay, like there's something Originality, about reality, man. I think I'm gonna go easy, easy Moby. I'm gonna yeah. go ninth. I'm gonna go ninth on that one, guys. I got LP and Super Duper in here, but I got ninth one on that joint. Okay. Yeah. Easy Mo Fire though. Easy Moby is fire. Uh, why do y'all got hold on? Why do y'all got um Ninth Wonder for originality? Because to me, Ninth Wonder sounds a lot like Pete. To be real, I can see that. Easy Mo B got songs like Lex Coops, Beamers, and Benz. He got Everything yeah. Remains Raw. He got stuff like The What, Warn It. He got uh Flavor in Your Ear. Like Ninth ain't got no flavor in your ear. Uh, Long I mean, Jeopardy. in your ear got like some of the best rappers ever. Like, <laughs> no, that know? beat is crazy, man. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> no, Havoc, Havoc will be mentioned. He's in the bracket. Y'all want to see who Havoc's going against first round? Unless we change right. it. First round, Havoc is going up against oh, Jermaine Dupree. How did this happen? Um, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yo, yo, we got we got some special guests in here. We got we got LP in here. We got Super Duper in here. We got LT. So let's start off with let's start off with Super Duper. LT, what's good? What's good? Let's start. So look, so look. Let's start off with LT. Let's go to Super Duper. Then let's go to LP after that. What's up? What's up with LT? Start with LT. What's going on? How y'all doing, fellas? Doing great, LT. man. Good to hear from you. Man, what's really good, it. y'all? For sure. And first and foremost, you know, God bless. Uh, Mike, I was trying to hit you up. Hit me up in the text as well, brother, for yes, sure. Sir. But I I definitely, man, just, man, these lists, there's something else. It's a lot going on. First of all, shout out Black Soprano family. That tour is starting up next Tuesday as well. Benny the Butcher, Everybody Can't Go, April 16th. Tap in, coming to your city, man. We got a lot going on. New York, Atlanta. Tap in with us for sure. The Butcher coming, nigga. Facts. Sure. Shout out, shout out, Leroy Green, Esquire, everybody, super, super, all everybody, man. Ron, uh, just this list, man. Just everything y'all saying. I know Mike, you know, you don't really rock with Swiss beats, but I got a, a little take on that as well. 
I did a lot it. of research with that with Swiss and, you know, with Rough Riders. And I don't feel like, you know, X would have made it to where he's at without Swiss Beats, honestly, you know, mm. to be real. Well, he did Rough Riders Anthem, but I thought X was popping before Rough Riders Anthem. Like, I, can't. I remember, I remember Stop Me and Greedy and Get At Me Dog was circle. No, no. What? Is that Leroy? Rough Riders Anthem? No, Get At Me Dog was popping, but they put Rough Riders Anthem out right after that. Yeah. So they only let it live for so long. You see, and this and this is the thing, Mike, real quick, I want your opinion on that. You know, if if DMX would have stayed with, you know, he had PK, Dame Grease. Shout out Dame Grease. I did an interview with him. That's that's the great. That's a guy. 70 million sold. If he would have stayed with that sound, would it have translated to radio, to down south, to the mainstream, that dark sound? I loved it. I loved it. But Swiss, I, like this man was saying, uh, what's the song? Y'all going to make me lose my mind. This man... If I gotta bring it to you, cowards, it's gonna be quick. If you've been to jail before, suck my. You saying this on the radio? You know right. what I'm saying? Because right. Swiss, that Swiss, Swiss did bring him to the radio. I will give you that. Um, yes, sir. Yeah, and he got <laughs> X some of those hit records, but I think they kind of brought each other to a certain level of success too. But Rough uh -huh. Riders Anthem is one of those. I won't say Diamond in the Rough, but that's the only song that Swiss did on the album, and for it to be such a big record. He really showed up. That's it. He really so, I, showed so that's up. it with Swiss, Dr. Dre. Who else, who else y'all say? Um, well, I was going to say, we, we're going with the, uh, which one are we on now? Uh, shoot. Uh, it was not just Blaze and Swiss. It was Easy Mo Be a Knife Wonder. Mm. Mm. And so for originality, I got, I got Easy Mo Be. Yeah. Love I got, I got a question, Mike. Yes, sir. Is Dr. Dre out of this? No, nah, he's on there. What's the point of this when we know Dr. Dre gonna win? <laughs> <laughs> we know Dr. Dre, Dre gonna win. You think Dr. Dre gonna beat Premier? He beat. Come on now. He he, did, he beat Kanye. So we know who gonna. It's gonna be them. Gonna be the top three. I'm I'm wow. guessing right now. Them gonna be the top three most likely. And mm, you know Dr. Yes, Dre sir. gonna win. Put, put him, put him <laughs> up this against. This is what Dr. Dre's path looks like. It's, huh? All right, so he gets past the first round. More than likely in round two, I think he's going against organized noise. Right? That would be his <laughs> path. And then if he gets out of that, I think he would be going up against Molly Mall. And then okay. I think that just based on what I'm seeing, it looks like he would face RZA after that. Which I don't think would be a cakewalk for Dre per se. You know it's a layup, man. It's Dr. Dre got this in the bag. Come on now. <laughs> Basically, he's definitely look at the it. Look at hey, it like I, this. They gotta beat Dr. Dre. Dr. Dre don't gotta beat them. That's why I think that these narratives and this conversation about credit from other producers might be important to make this competitive. Now, granted, if Dre made everything by himself undisputably then this is hands down but i think there are a lot of people that feel like rizza could be a better hip-hop producer than dr dre man y'all should no, almost do this on the station head just so we can hear the music real time you know it, it'll be it'll be it'll and definitely that, be a great station head to go at it with it's about RZA facts, and, dre? and this is what triggered everybody. or just the whole the whole thing my bad, bro. And what triggered me? No, all good. My bad too. My, and what triggered me to call in is is that that see, I feel like we got to go off of what's on paper and not go too much into rumor and what he says, she said, because right. that's across the board. Because Man. Kanye got mad, other people on his credits, uh, Daz yeah. pops ish and apologizes. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, uh, Just Blaze got beat up in the club for stealing beats they said high tech <laughs> was stealing beats i mean you know so this stuff can go across and then the other thing is too is is like if i had to pick one producer if i got their best production i'm gonna go with pete rock he's my personal wow. the, the horns that's my favorite kind of sound I but wish. he died when sampling died i know he's trying to come up with it now but how many producers 
fell off when sampling fell off because that was the only way. Like, I feel like that's why Large Pro can't really get no bookings mm. like that. How much does it cost to sample beats now? Does it even make sense to pay to get your kind of production when I got to pay 20 other people because you're using sampling because you don't know how to play an instrument? You know what I mean? So I think we yeah. got to just go off of this person did this, this did that, Drake gets their credit, RZA gets their credit because everybody can make a claim for why this person did this or didn't do it. And even somebody as pure as DJ Premier, what's DJ Premier's last classic album? Was it 20 mm. years ago? Was it Christina Aguilera? I, 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 you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like th the most recent classics, possibly Kanye, but then he also started back in the 2000s, you know? So Swiss never made a classic album that I'm aware of. So, I mean, we can talk in circles about all those things. So I think we got to go with these people are credited for what they did. And we just right. got to hold them to that, in hey, my is, opinion. Is is Hit Boy still in? Hit Boy? Yeah, yeah, he's in there. He got to be. You want to okay. see what Hit Boy's path is? Hit Boy, okay. uh, let's see. Let me. Hey. We got Hit Boy going up against. Sorry. <laughs> Salute to LP hey. too. Salute LP. I didn't know LP he was up on the knowledge like that. Salute LP. Oh yeah, man. LP is on it. Hey man, we don't listen uh, to Benny for nothing. You got to be up on your game a little bit to know what's up. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay, here it is. I, I done found it. All right, so Hit Boy he got London on the track the first round, Ooh. and then who he takes the winner of Sunny Digital and Boy Wonder. Wonder. Sunny, Sunny. And then if he gets past that, in my opinion, I think he might be going up against Mike Will Mays. Woo! And then I think it's Metro after that. Woo! Woo! So Met he got a bit of a pass. Mm. So Metro. It ain't gonna be no cakewalk. Really, it ain't gonna be cakewalk. No cakewalk for anybody except for maybe in a lot of people's minds, Dre, but. Like I said, Dre's going to possibly hit RZA at some point. So, mm, I don't know. Yeah. I think it could get interesting. More interesting than people might think. I, I don't I don't push back on LP. I don't think Primo needs a classic album at this stage because he's had so many classic songs and hits with pretty much everybody we know that's dope that I think if, if someone wants to make an album with him, he's down, but they got to want to do it. And you see you said even, Primo? You said Primo don't have no classic album? No, he does. Just recently. Recently. Oh, okay. I was making sure we... I was getting clarified. Right <laughs> no, and I feel, no, and I feel you. I was just speaking on the longevity conversation. So if we start talking about longevity and when's the last time Dr. Dre dropped the classic album, well, Pete Rock and DJ Premier was way earlier than them on the last true classic. I see people saying Prime. I don't think that ish is a classic at all. Cool rhymes, whatever, do what you do. I don't think it's a classic album. Prime isn't held in the top. I mean, is it a top 50 album? I mean, Premier probably got like three or four albums that's going to come up before Prime is even mentioned. Even Royce does. What so, do y'all think about the first round of uh, DJ Quick and Prince Paul? I'm going to go Quick. I got Prince Paul. I got Quick. Maybe Quick. Quick. Mm. Hey, man. I'm gonna go quick, you know. If you get if you're giving me the first three De La Soul albums and then you're giving me Prince of Thieves album yeah. wise, I gotta give it to Prince Paul if you want. But I understand quick too. That's a tough one. But for me, mm. I got three classic De La Soul albums. Nobody's gonna question that. And the man, the Prince of Thieves album is a whole story concept album, 22 tracks different rappers and they all keep within the theme of what the story is so i think cre creativity you yeah. know that's where i'm leaning in that direction yeah he he is the creativity i mean we talk about de la being so different he's a big part of that and he's the guy that created skits too and um, great diggers with yeah, RZA. Great and he kind of gave he, gave, exactly. he had the wu-tang sound before wu-tang because if you go to de la soul is dead some of that could easily if you said RZA had some work on that, I wouldn't be surprised. Well, see, the mm. funny thing is, to piggyback That's off of that, LP, is the fact that RZA's in the group. Millie Prince got Paul a gun? Exactly. Exactly. So Millie got a gun? That's Wu-Tang that sound. Mm. Yeah, if you hold RZA high, you got to hold Prince Paul high because when it came down to who was going to produce that album, it wasn't RZA. 
The Rizzo, though, if you if, if it's Rizzo, Rizzo was Prince Rakim. But yeah, yeah, if it's between Rizzo and Prince Paul, though, I don't think Prince Paul Prince Paul is making only built for Cuban links. So. Absolutely not. Yeah, no, there's levels. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm just saying, that just <laughs> but you know you how great Prince Paul yeah. is. The fact that he's in a group with Rizzo and he's producing the album, and Rizzo is, not you know what I'm saying? Right. Um, <laughs> what about this Rick Rubin Eric Sermon first round? Woo. Sermon. And you know what? And and again, going back to the rumors, Eric Sermon said himself that he didn't even produce the first EPMD records. He was telling them what to do, but he didn't even know how to touch the boards. He said that. Who I'm still gonna, I, I forgot who he was with, and it wasn't Larry David. I can't remember the specific name, but he himself said that he wasn't touching the boards during that time. Mm. He was just kind of giving the sound, and this is what I want done before he learned it. But again, to be fair, I'm still going to give him the credit on the EPMD albums because the sound isn't the sound without him. So with that being said, I got to give it to E-Double on that one. Mm. Got it. Especially mm. when Rick Rubin was using a lot of presets. That was a knock on Rick Rubin that I've heard later on. It's like when you would go back to him, a lot of them were just presets that he just tapped in, not knocking mm. it. But when that you start talking sense. about adding the, sem- the samples and everything else and the guitars, that's all Larry Smith adding the extra layers to it. So respect to him. But even his last great one, 99 Problems, sounds like an 80s record. It does. <laughs> At, what, look, great breakdown there. I mean, if we're talking to Easy Moby and the Ninth Wonder thing, <laughs> I got Easy Moby. Sorry. Easy Moby? Yeah, I'm going Easy Moby. <laughs> That's a tough one, but I, I, I have to agree with you, even though I think Knife got some classic albums. Easy Mo doesn't have. I hold if you uh-huh. produce a classic album high. So you got the listening yeah. in the minstrel show, and you got the Rhapsody. Some people want to call that a classic. I, I, I'll, I'll throw it that bone. Um, Easy Mo B, I think musically, if you're just saying who makes the better like sounding beats, I like Easy Mo B better. But Knife, and he got the longevity on him now, too. He's got 20 he years got in the game. On him. He was but- on Damn, you know. Ninth ain't got no uh, flavor in your ear, though, does he? Or give me the loot. Wow. <laughs> or warning. Hey, but exactly. that's why I say that you, know, you really need to hear the music instead of going by word of mouth right now. Y- y'all should definitely do a station head for this. Okay. Hey, but um, I, I, really, I, didn't, I didn't really call to talk about the uh, the producer debate, man. I, I called it the... about two, Tupac, man. I don't, I don't know how nobody... <laughs> I, I don't see how it's possible. For Tupac not to be on everybody, number one, maybe other than Nas on your list, like Nas is number one in reality based on the catalog alone. So I, I will give Nas number one, but Tupac mm. is definitely number two. Those those two artists are the only artists that can that can talk about everything. Mm. Jay Z, Big, they really pretty much was only good at kind of talking about themselves, really. They didn't do it. They didn't do as much as Tupac what um, could do. They mm. wasn't as well rounded as Tupac. No other artist is as, as, as well rounded as Tupac and Nas when it comes to down to everything, this- whether it's conscious. Jay- Been hearing this argument forever, brother. Jay Z, Jay Z, so Jay Super, Jay Z, Big Pimpin', Give It To Me. You know, um, I mean, a lot of other people- songs. Change clothes. People are going to pick Jay Z's radio songs and say this represents Jay Z. They're not no. going to go albums and see what. Really- I'm not picking his radio songs, man. I told you, I, I told y'all before, I can't stand none of his hits. I don't like one Jay Z hit. I don't like one Jay Z song that was on the radio, really. Not one. Hey, I super. like the B side, Jay. But super, yeah. super, super, but super. Let this LT. Why, um, why do you like Pac's radio songs like more than Jay Z's radio songs? Why? Because they were better, they just were better. Why? They were Why? better songs when you, because like I get around was it? Is, I can, he still was able to radio songs. I, I, I get around is better than every Jay Z radio hit. Wow. Um, I think I get around oh. is better than Big Pimpin and Give It to Me. Yes, I agree. Yeah. Dear Mama also, is better than every Jay Z radio hit. I I'm also think a lot of Jay Z's hits sound like the trend of that time. Yeah. Even even hard knock life is just the sound of that era where Pox hits mm. their hits at any moment at any time they sound like Pac hits. 
so a dear oh, mama uh, mm. uh, any of his stuff when you really listen to it if it drops today it sounds fresh today it dropped in the 90s it sounds fresh then and then it's mm. also he found a way to make hits with timeless themes you know jay-z yeah. ain't make a dear mama not many have even <laughs> kanye yeah. who got the closest mama song it's not a radio single so he mm. was able to do a lot with that right now and do that you don't Sorry. think jay can go on stage right now and do those same things no, he would have did it already. No, what, what, he, he hasn't did, done. He did a, <laughs> yeah, he, he did, did it already. He, Leroy, he did a, a full album, four, 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 which is in the vein of the sentiments of Dear Mama and going through those things. None of those are hits. What what hit came out what of four, four, four? Push it made the that and push it made it his song. Would that's you, not what, that's what, not Jay Z song no more. What goalpost has Jay? What has Jay not done that you would like me to tell you he's done? Because again, he's not, he has a, he, he's not conscious. They, he's, he's not no, his only conscious song that he's not he's not really conscious. Not, he got maybe one or two songs that's that's conscious. He, he tried to downplay not Leroy Leroy. The man tried to downplay kicking knowledge when he did not. He downplayed kicking kick knowledge. Let's get the whole line. He said he named songs he was talking about kicking knowledge. He named right. you Oji and Uchi Wally. Right. And versus Black Girl Lost right. and another song. And he right. said, between these four songs, are you trying to kick knowledge? He didn't, he, he named four specific songs. Now, granted, again, what I'm telling people, when DMX, I'm not going to use Pac because, again, y'all not going to see past. Me. I'm going to use DMX. When DMX came out, people were like, DMX, DMX, right? And, and, and they should be like that because DMX was awesome, right? Right. Super, super awesome. Leroy, you wrong, man. This is you're not you missing the point. Jay speaks to that mm -hmm. dude. Jay, you know that dude that was quiet. He wasn't loud. He was never in, he was never out there going crazy. He was a quiet guy that was in the game that was getting money and he kept to his business. Now Jay is repping for that guy. Because yeah, but that's also, all he did. Tupac Tupac was repping for everybody. <laughs> When when two when Jay Z makes when Jay Z makes um you must love me that's real pain mm, mm. that's real it, that's it's real him talking about himself like I said it's, it's he, he good at talking about himself and talking about his life he's not he's so, not good in the every in the every man really situation he's not good in the every man situation and you know what else you got to give Tupac credit for when he was yeah. his emotions when Tupac yeah. was happy. He, he he expressed you 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 heard the happiness in his voice when he was angry when he was mad when he was sad when he was when he was rapping with compassion you felt everything that he was able. Tupac is the most complete artist in that aspect. What rapper can you can you name that can get their emotions out and express their happiness, their sadness, they 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 love for the community and all that at the same time? No, none of these other guys could do that. Not Nas, Nas is even is not. Lucky me, you must love me. A week ago, coming of age, if I should die, dope man, there's been a murder, anything, soon you'll understand, never change. Mama loves me, a dream, guns and roses, a ballad for a fallen soldier. Um, uh, 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 my first song, December 4th, pray, beach chair, minority report. Again, all songs about himself. Nichols and all those songs are about him. No, he speaks to people that grew up with, with little to no money. I found a way to bro. hustle their way out of poverty. Okay, and that's that's Leroy, all fun and dandy, but that's on, not bro. that's not the every that's not the every man struggle. I'm sorry, go ahead, bro. Get that Leroy, man. Yes, yeah, sorry. I just the Jay Z is the every man struggle, Leroy. Jay Z is the every man struggle. Come on, hey. dog. You can't be serious. He came it's in the game talking about bum rappers. It's about, and, he, act, it's about respect. Hey, it's about coping with the violence that you produce. American Gangster Reasonable Doubt is about coping with the violence that you have produced. Leroy. In your neighborhood. And Leroy. It's not American possible. Gangster. It's not possible that you're trying to compare this. You're not trying to. You're not trying to compare this to Tupac. You know that Tupac Let could me. do it all way more no. than Jay Z. Just because so, you can so name I, a couple of songs. I think Jay can stand on his own feet. I, I think no, that's fine. That's that, Let me that's come, fine. Let me that he, say. Go ahead. Go ahead, y'all. Let me say oh, this, Leroy. I Leroy think before reasonable doubt, 
Let me give we a middle ground. Oh, that's what I am nah, talking about. Salute, salute the salute um, Jay Z. You know, salute the Tupac. Salute. And I like, let me say this Tupac is all time number one in my book, but check it out. You know, uh, Super LP as well. You know, who else? It's pretty much nobody like Tupac. You know, Tupac is a one of one. Tupac is it all around. But right. exactly. you know, as far, Jay Z said he did four mil. He ain't been rhyming like common sense. He ain't rhyming like common sense. I mean, so What's, that's the what Jay said. What's the whole verse? What's the whole verse? I didn't he was rapping like the full Snickers. I, I never heard the Jay. That I never heard that Jay. You heard that? You <laughs> heard the common Jay? Reasonable. You doubt. never heard that Jay? Reasonable it's doubt the, is nothing like um shed so many tears, or or um um uh death around the corner or uh hey, fuck super. the world. That J life Jay Z life, got life, nothing life, like them songs. Life, life super, goes on. Let me ask life you a question, on. super super. I hate to say this. I hate to say this. Salute to all my people up north. I'm rocking. I'm you know we on the tour. Benny the Butcher, Conway the Machine, all of that. But let me ask you a question, super. What artists, to be real, what artists from New York? I mean, did you feel that emotion like that though? Honestly, yeah, man. I, I hate to say this, like even Nas, you don't feel the emotion. He's he just he's a great super artist, but as far Tretch. as emotion, Tretch, Tretch and DMX. But but that's all. That's DMX. also what makes Pac Pac Salute. is the fact that he was able. To, well, D and DMX came after Pac, so DMX. he could easily have been influenced by the emotion True. that Pac was putting out there. My thing about yeah. Leroy being, I mean, sorry, not Leroy, but my thing about Jay Z being the everyman. The man's first single was "I Spent Japan Yen in Ten Major Events." <laughs> and what I mean, like, I said, yeah, like, what are we talking about, Common Man? You know, no, and then the going man, back to the thing about the Nas stuff, I think it's funny yeah. that. We want to use the thing about Nas about is it Uchi, Mal, Uchi, Uchi Wally or one mic and use that as a contradiction, but everybody else would use that as range. So is it range or is it contradiction? Because then if, then if he's contradicting himself, then name a rapper who did it. I, it's every, called range. Every, 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 I can, every, I can care. Every human I can being care about every, what women are going through and go through other things and understand different things too. You know what I mean? Martin Luther King cheated. I mean, I don't understand where somebody has to be holier than thou. He was making mm -hmm. records. And the difference mm -hmm. is, is, is that where Nas was able to say, I tried them few shoes. It didn't fit me. It wasn't mm -hmm. for me, but I tried it. Jay Z, it took him 20 years to make a 444, and you were trying to kick dudes for kicking knowledge. And on top of that, Jay Z is like 10 years older than the dudes that he was talking to. That's why Mace felt like I got an old dude coming at me, bro. Like I'm a young cat getting it. You know what I'm saying? He said, Y'all make if I make big pimping or something, y'all say that I fell off. You know, I mean, y'all held me as the greatest writer of the 21st century. If I make the something, you know, thought provoking, they say I'm falling off. Right, falling off say yeah. I'm falling right, off. So you couldn't even, and you could so he couldn't I, even stand on his own, too. I double, I dumped down my flow to double my dollars, right? Yes, sir. That's what he said. We all understood he why he was making his money. Nas and Illmatic said, I don't need the white fans, I can go gold with it. That's he what did. he was saying. He when did. Nas it, in the peak of his death oh, channel, no, no, we gotta get where... to the super chats real quick. We gotta get to the super <laughs> My yep. Mad Max says, um, to say home and conscious is ridiculous. All of them joints Leroy name, even if Jay's talking about himself. I can keep hundreds of them. The ghetto, you can relate to Jay. Also, hey, put you uh put you on game like stop. I will never pay to the fact that Jay is not conscious. If people are expecting me to say Jay is not a conscious person or Jay, a reasonable doubt is not conscious, volume is not conscious, again, just because you don't relate, and I'm not Bro, saying uh, I'm not a real person, what I'm saying is not everybody was the- You relate black, to Japan Yen and some major events? Was the gangster. <laughs> people were quiet in the street. They got, they, they, and they just, they just held their own. <laughs> Before we I'm just asking down. Leroy, you can compare to Koreans and you can't see them. <laughs> I, I'm just like you, your game is butter. So for the game they want to toast you to, I just want to understand the relatability. I get now, it, and I know that it relates to people that it relates to within that structure. But ours. and when we say we everyday to, man in comparison to Tupac, that's where we, we lose each other. Ours. You know what I'm saying? Like it's not. Yeah, that, that's really all I'm saying is compared to Tupac, man. We compared can't you can't Tupac. compare Daisy's content to Tupac. Jay right, never. Right. To be Tupac. That's Leroy. what people understand. Hey, Leroy. 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 Uh, let me get Mad Max Super Chat. He says, Jay kicked knowledge, though. Uh, his Jay wanted to be himself, not Tupac. 
Yeah, his point to Nas was that you're over righteous. Well, we got to wrap up, guys. Man, it's been a great discussion. Leroy, man. hold on, can, Mike, 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 Mike. One thing, Leroy. <laughs> Leroy is, is Tupac better than Jay Z? Brother, I think Jay Z had thirty more years of his career, brother. That's a lot. I I, yeah. I can name I could name a thousand songs that we have all overlooked that raised us after '96. That this when I start as good as Tupac's. When I start naming them songs, it's gonna bring you back to a time, brother. True, true. When I when we talk about range, when we talk about range, I think anybody who can go from a, a volume one to a volume two to a, a dynasty to a blueprint to a blueprint two, these albums have different sounds to a, a blueprint three to a American Gangster four 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 a, a written testimony. Watch the throne. All of these are different, different sounds, different perspectives. A different person dealing with a different time in his life. He's going. You see him going through different. He, he went work backwards from married life to almost divorce to conscious life to um, I'm not in the game. I'm not a gangster no more. To now I'm a pop star. To now okay, I'm one foot in the street, one foot not in the street. To now I'm mafioso age. I've made it, but I feel bad about what I've done. I have all about him once again yeah. his, his yeah. most his most yeah. conscious song is really yeah. young black and rich nice bro many people have sold drugs many people have had shootouts yeah. many people have yeah. seen death like yeah. so he's not just speaking for his life yeah. i know people don't think think that he is but it ain't just him that hit that corner a lot of us hit that block at one point in time Leroy is, is Leroy's pocket. Hey, on reasonable without telling us to uh uh to NY property and flip houses. That's mm. knowledge. You can use that. Uh use not feel good. Yo, hey, yo, Mike, Mike, Mike on that end. Mike on that end. We gonna we gonna we gotta wrap up, man. It's the yeah, birthday. Yes, I got a, I got a birthday party to get to, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yes, I got a I got hey, I left. To I left a party just to talk about this real quick. I gotta go to a party. I gotta go to a party. <laughs> with Duke. I only turned forty-one once. So I gotta turn up real quick. So, so yo, Ron, we yeah. gonna be back. We gonna be back on. Uh, we might do a special Saturday, but if we don't come on Saturday. We'll be back definitely on Monday, I, and we gonna, we gonna turn up. Well, I'm we definitely we definitely need to com to continue this conversation because um yeah I, we do you know we gotta go dig a little deeper in this for real. I want to say something real quick, too, man. And this is the last time I'm going to speak on it, man. Like, you know, the whole uh, the whole coop shit or whatever. Like, yesterday, my fiance got some weird text message from some weird number. And I know that, you know, who was behind it. Got to stop this Internet stuff. You got a problem with me? Holler at me. Don't be putting my fiance in this, man. You know what I mean? Like, for the people who follow this show and know for real, like she lost her mother. You don't know how people's day is going. I don't need individual individuals putting added on shit into people's day that's unnecessary. So holler at me if you want to holler at me, but leave family out of it. I ain't never said any of this shit to you. I ain't never came to any of your people. This shit is corny. Grow the fuck up and hopefully everybody can move forward and do whatever they doing. That's right, Mike. I, I second that, man. Stop with all these fucking um these 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 bots yeah. in the chat. Yeah, I'm and anybody and, and any other platform not to cut you off, Ron, that supports that, that's corny too. We here to talk about hip hop, and you know what I mean? And I'm people are trying to get me to stoop to their level. I'm not gonna do it. God's in charge, and all the people want to talk all this righteous stuff, talk about you know, black folks working together, talk about how you respect women and talk about how you uh ride for mental health. Your contradiction to all of that. Chill. You better than that. You should be better than that. Don't violate, man. Don't violate. Don't be screenshotting text messages and putting it on Twitter. Don't be calling people females. Don't be calling corny, people girls. That's corny, man. Whoever's no, 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 platforming no, no. this clown, whoever's platforming this clown. It's on but some again, stuff. I ain't speaking on this anymore. But like I said, man, don't be contacting my fiance for no crazy ass numbers with some crazy ass cryptic shit. That's 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 that's, 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 that's that, weak. Man. That's buster stuff, man. That's buster stuff. Right. But anyway, we have a, great night. have a good night. According to hip hop baby. Shout out to Lee Ward Green. Shout out to Super Duper. Shout out to LT. Shout out to E. You know what I'm saying? We'll be back on Monday, maybe Saturday. Peace. Okay. Happy birthday. We're gonna we're gonna turn up. Peace.
Got on them strap pants, her ass clap hands when she laughed in. 